another season of promise in 2008. Live from Bloomington, Indiana, it's college football on the Big Ten Network as the Indiana Hoosiers host the Hilltoppers from Western Kentucky University in the first ever meeting between these two teams. Great to have you with us for today's game. Tom Wormy along with Tony McGee. And Tony, what a season for Indiana last year. Seven and six and to a bowl game for the first time since 1993. Tom, they're optimistic about this season. They have their dynamic quarterback in Kellen Lewis. They also have a tough young veteran defense that can help them get back to a bowl game. For Kellen Lewis, he did have some off-field issues, was suspended from spring drills, but he is back under center, confident, ready to go. Threw for over 3,000 yards last year. 37 touchdowns accounted for best in the Big Ten Conference. And the only thing that matters to Kellen Lewis is a number one. He needs one touchdown to become IU's career leader in touchdown passes. What I like about Kellen Lewis is he slows the game down. He's one step or one play ahead of everyone else on the field. He's going to miss the 16 touchdown passes that he threw to James Hardy last year. He's going to have to find a couple guys he can throw to with Andrew Means and Ray Fisher. We'll see how that works out for him today. On the other side of the ball, K.J. Black, he's going to want to run the ball today and, and hand it off to his running backs. But he has to establish some consistency in his passing game with Cooper and Graves on the outside, Tom. That game-winning field goal with 30 seconds to go. What does this season hold? Western Kentucky and Indiana is next. Big Ten Network football is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. Keep the wheels turning. By Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And by Nissan, proud sponsor of the 2008 Heisman Trophy, shift the way you move through the world. Welcome back to Bloomington, Indiana for Western Kentucky and Indiana, the home opener. And joining us, the third member of our broadcast team with more on Kellen Lewis, the quarterback for Indiana, here is Megan West. Hey there, gentlemen. You know, two months ago, head coach Bill Lynch didn't even know if he was going to be a member of the Hoosiers. And now both the players and coaching staff say he's a better team player than ever. Kellen says the problem was, well, he bought into his own hype. Clearly, the coaches know he was such a talented prospect coming out of high school, did so well in his Hoosier career, he just bought into his own hype too much. Kellen says he's much better, much more relaxed, much more of a team player now that he did have that suspension in the spring to come back, help his teammate out. He's over at some of his teammates' houses every night playing an Xbox, and he said he's really just bought into the system. But this is not about him. This is about Kellen and his team. Much different outlook than before. Gentlemen. Thank you, Megan. Kellen told us he was having pity parties for himself, and his teammates didn't want to hear anything about that. So he spiraled upwards and now is with the team as the starting quarterback for the Hoosiers. Now the head coach for the Western Kentucky University Hilltoppers is David Elson. He is in his sixth season at Western Kentucky. Just turned 37 years old and Elson will lead his team onto the field against Bill Lynch and the Indiana Hoosiers. Elson an Indianapolis native and also played his college football at Butler University as did the head coach of Indiana, Bill Lynch, in his second year. Overall, 88 wins, 73 losses, and three ties. Also the head coach at Ball State and at Butler University, where he played collegiately as a quarterback. Now time to take a look at today's Suzuki ATV's keys to the game with Tony McGee. The running game success for Western Kentucky, that's what they're going to need to establish that one with Tyrell Hayden. He he got 95 yards a game last year. If he gets 95 today, that'll be good. And they also have to contain Lewis. You, he can beat you with his arm. He can beat you with his legs. But you can't let him get loose on both aspects of his game. Indiana's defensive gro growth is going to be important today. They've got the three amigos at linebackers. Let's see if those guys can make something happen. And last but certainly not least, the new wrinkle they added to their offense, the no huddle. Let's see if that adds a little bit more to that 32 points a game they scored last year, Tom. That was second best in school history as far as points per game is concerned and Kellen Lewis 
threw 28 touchdowns through the air last year, set a school record and was second in the conference. He put up really Heisman-like numbers because the only two quarterbacks who put up bigger numbers than him as far as passing and rushing, well, one of them won the Heisman Trophy in Tim Tebow, and the other one from, was from Central Michigan, Dan LaFever. So Lewis is right up there in that mix with those types of quarterbacks. But what he has to do is he, is he has to establish a new threat in the passing game. He had the big receiver, James Hardy, last year to throw to when he got in the red zone. Hardy caught 16 touchdowns. And he's got to find out who's going to step up. Andrew Means is playing that position out wide now. Will Andrew be able to step up and make plays for Lewis in the passing game today? That's the question for the IU offense, Tom. James Hardy with 79 catches for the Hoosiers. And also, he has now gone on to the NFL as he was a draft pick of the Buffalo Bills. So Western Kentucky will receive the kickoff. They will be in the white Indiana in the cream and crimson here at Memorial Stadium in Bloomington, Indiana. And we're looking for Western Kentucky to run the football today. That's the strength of their offense. They want to get the ball in Hayden's hands. And K.J. Black, he's not afraid to keep it and take off around the edge as well. So Indiana's defense has to stop that run. David Elson facing the sidelines. We got a chance to talk to him yesterday. Very personable, very excited. One of the younger coaches as his team makes its transition from the football championship subdivision to the football bowl subdivision. And next year they will be members of the Sun Belt Conference. Tom, you know David Elson, I played against him in high school. He was a safety in Indianapolis. <laughs> he said he didn't get on the field that game, but I did play against him in high school. So he is a young for a head coach. He was 31 when he got the head coaching position. So Austin Starr will kick it away for the Hoosiers. Starr who provided the dramatics in the final seconds of the victory to win the old Oaken bucket against Purdue in the final regular season game a year ago and send Indiana to the inside bowl, the game they lost against Oklahoma State. With Terrence Cooper and Morel Booker are deep for Western Kentucky and we are underway from Memorial Stadium. This will be Cooper five yards deep in the end zone and he elects to stay there a touchback on the opening kickoff from Starr. In terms of field position ball placement is very important when a team starts inside their own 20 yard inside their own 20 yard line statistically speaking they have a they have a better chance of, of not scoring a touchdown. So here comes Western Kentucky for its first offensive series. They will go with a no huddle, and there's K.J. Black, the starting quarterback. Last year had three starts, but has been given the keys to the car by David Elson here on first and 10 in the first opening series of the game for Western Kentucky. Black with a quick pass, and his very first pass is complete for about a four-yard gain. Time for the Rotel starting lineup because you can't start your game day without Rotel's famous queso. And for Western Kentucky up front, Greg Ryan, who sat out all of last year, back in the starting lineup off in the offensive line for Western Kentucky. Second down and six. There's the backs and receivers. Jake Gabler, the wide receiver, 35 catches last year, the leading returning receiver for Western Kentucky. On second down, Black will throw again, and this one is incomplete. Indiana defensively, and they've got a couple of changes. Greg Middleton will not be in the starting lineup. The all-conference defensive end who had 16 sacks last year to lead the entire nation. He will not be in the lineup. He is suspended for this game for disciplinary reasons. Replacing him at right end is Jamie Kierlew, number 57. And Ryan Mirando, number 35, has been elevated on the depth chart to the starting left end. Here comes third down for Western Kentucky, 30 seconds into the ball game. It'll be Black from the shotgun, roll it right and throw. And a big stick at the point of attack. Nick Pope came in to make the stop. Nick, he gets some encouragement from his teammates. That'll bring up fourth down for Western Kentucky. And Nick Polk, he's a great athlete. He was a former receiver. They moved him to the free safety. He can cover the field and come in and make that stick for them. They want to get those. They want to get their safeties, the Hoosiers, into the into the run game. I'm sorry, into the. Polk was 74 tackles last year. Had a fumble recovery, also had an interception in the inside bowl in Tempe, Arizona. That is Fisher back to receive the kick for Indiana. 
Fisher will let it bounce at the 42, and it takes a Western go, go, Kentucky go. roll inside the 30, and will be down right at the 30. First and 10 for the Hoosiers on their first offensive series. Tom, Western Kentucky has to get a little bit more out of their offense than that. They, they got a total of four plays or four yards on that series. They have to get more from an offensive standpoint to be competitive with the Hoosiers today. And Tony, take a look at the numbers from Kellen Lewis. <laughs> Over 3,000 yards passing, the 28 touchdowns. He, that he, was second in the conference and set a school record. He's a Heisman candidate. The low snap fielded by Lewis. Swings it out to Fisher. Just shy of the 35. He'll pick up about four yards on the play. If you notice, both of these teams came out and run that, but ran that bubble screen. We're going to see a lot of that today because they both run a version of the spread offense. So second down for Indiana. And offensively, the offensive line, Roger Saffold and Pete Saxon. Backs and receivers, Fisher and Means. Those will be the receivers that will be relied upon during the course of this season. When you look at Thigpen, that's one of the question marks about IU today is a running game. Thigpen's got to get a little bit more than that for the Hoosiers on, for, on first down, second down. So that's third and seven now. Lewis to throw has some time, but now he's sacked. Lewis goes down to the pile, and the sack comes from Blake Boyd, who came in and made the sack. That is the... First sack of the season for Boyd. He now has three and a half in his career. And you'd expect Indiana's veteran offensive line not to let the linebackers from Western Kentucky in that easy. They got to keep people off Kellen Lewis. The most important thing about running the spread offense is keeping your quarterback healthy. Chris Hogger up will punt it away for Indiana. He will bounce and bounce in Indiana's favor, rolling all the way down inside the 20. And down to the 18. The Rotel de defensive lineup for Indiana because you can't start your game without Rotel's famous queso. The defensive line. And again, we highlighted the changes. Jamie Kierlew comes in for Greg Middleton, who is suspended for one game. Will Patterson, one of the more experienced linebackers. 104 tackles last season for Patterson, second on the team. And the top tackler, Austin Thomas, 112 last year to lead the team to go along with one interception. Thomas, 22 tackles in the game against Michigan State. Wow. Black will scramble out of the pocket and get a couple of yards. And a flag comes in. A couple of flags come in late. The tackle made by Deontay Mack. So we will sort out the penalties here. It looks like it's a face mask, and they changed that rule. Number 52 with a face mask. Penalty is 15 yards. First down. With the rule change, every time you face mask somebody now, the five-yard face mask is no, is no longer th in the rules. It's a 15-yard penalty, and that's huge for Western Kentucky because they haven't been able to gain offense otherwise. So first and 10 for Western Kentucky from its own 33-yard line. Black now checking off to the sidelines. Play clock down to six. And they go to the ground right up the middle. So after all that, it's an inside handoff for Western Kentucky on first down with 11.30 to go here in the first quarter. And that's Hayden on the carry. And Hayden's going to be the guy that they want to get the ball in his hands. He averaged 94 yards a game last year. If he gets off to a start like that today, it could be a long day for the Hoosiers, Tom. So quickly in the no huddle offense, here comes Western Kentucky. On second and five. And Black will not pull the trigger until he is entirely ready and has everybody in order. To the near side, and that one is complete. Great-looking ball from Black. 
And the and reason, right on target to his receiver, Tristan Jones. And the reason why Black had completed that ball to Jones was he had all the time, his offensive line gave him a nice, nice pocket to throw the ball from. Jones is a guy who doesn't get the ball very much, so uh, he made something happen. We may see a little more of him in the game today. Jones, a redshirt freshman from Mount Sterling, Kentucky. That's a first down play for Western Kentucky as they move the ball up to the 43-yard line. First and 10 for the Hilltoppers. Black tried the fake handoff and went nowhere. Stuck immediately, Ryan Mirando. Now here's a guy who gets his chance as a late flag comes in, but Mirando elevated on the depth chart to start this game because of Middleton's absence, and he makes the play here. And, and Mirando's job is to take the quarterback out every time. He did a good job of that. He's a smaller guy. He's very fast, so he can be effective today. After the play was over, personal foul. Defense, number 16. The penalty is 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Personal foul against Christopher Phillips, the senior from Atlanta, Georgia, number 16, as you get a look at Miranda, who made a great defensive play, but it is now nullified on the personal foul from Phillips, who is starting at corner for Indiana. Tom, lack of discipline hurts Indiana's defense on that play, and I'm sure Coach Lynch is not happy about that. First and 10 from the Indiana 46 for Western Kentucky University. Second offensive series of the game for the Hilltoppers. Black has it. And he is cut down. Will Patterson made the ankle tackle on Black, but it's a significant gain on first down. Brings up second and short for Western Kentucky. And Patterson, he is one of the three linebackers, that's the strength of that Indiana defense. They call themselves the three amigos. They want to make a lot of plays. They spent a lot of time in the weight room this offseason. It's paying off right here. Second down and five. Hayden in the backfield with Black. After an eternity, they finally snap it. Black feels the pressure, gets away from the pocket, and now is taken down. It'll be just shy of the first down, maybe about a yard short coming up here on third down. But Black, they almost had him in the backfield. And the reason why K.J. Black is playing quarterback and he beat David Wokey out is because he has the ability to, to be elusive and get away from sure tackles and make some positive gains for the Hilltoppers. And it was that pump fake that bought him an extra half second. And he turned a negative into a positive. Third and short. What a play. That's Patterson. We just talked about the linebackers. Will Patterson, we met with him yesterday, and he told us that he and the rest of the linebackers, they want to make a statement out here today in the Big Ten. He just shot the gap, came untouched in there to make the tackle on Hayden. Western Kentucky, the strength of their offense is their running game. If, he, if he's getting tackled for loss, that's not going to be in their favor today. Hayden gained 1,000 yards, actually 1,134 last year, but dropped for a loss by Will Patterson, one of the tri-captains on this Indiana team. One of the three amigos. Jeremy Moore punts it for Western Kentucky, tries to put it in the corner, and does so effectively as it rolls out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Indiana coming out for its second series. Western Kentucky and the Hoosiers in the opener from Memorial. Back in Bloomington, no score between Indiana and Western Kentucky. Big Ten tonight is your ultimate source for all things Big Ten. It's the nightly show for highlights, analysis of all of today's action interviews, and so much more. Big Ten tonight, 11 p.m. Eastern, 10 Central, only on the Big Ten Network. Indiana will start from its own 10-yard line. Kellen Lewis is the quarterback, threw for over 3,000 yards last year, set a school record, and was third in the conference. But it was three and out first time around for Indiana. Marcus Thigpen is the back. But Lewis will keep it. A couple of moves across the 15 and up to the 17. <laughs> Now for the Rotel starting lineup, because you can't start your game without Rotel's famous queso. And the starters for Western Kentucky on the linebacker core. Blake Boyd, who had a sack in the previous series, 
And the defensive backs, Marcus Miner, 61 tackles, the top returning tackler for Western Kentucky. But that's going to be a first down for Indiana as Marcus Thigpen churns and burns for a fresh set of downs. And, Tom, that's what Indiana has to do. They have to get Marcus Thigpen run in between the tackles and be effective using that big offensive line to get up on the linebackers and make plays. First and 10 from the 25 for the Hoosiers. Here comes Lewis right up the middle, has some running room across midfield. It's a sprint to the end zone. Will Lewis win it? Yes, he will. Tom, that's got to be deflating for the Hilltoppers offense. Kellen Lewis took the ball took the ball right up the middle of the field, and he went virtually untouched the whole way. That's the value of running that spread offense. It mixes you up. Everyone tailed on Marcus Thigpen, and it allowed Lewis to get right up the field untouched for how far was that touchdown? 75 yards, 75 my man. yards. 75 it, he yard may run. be making his case to uh, put some votes, get some votes for the Heisman <laughs> Trophy. That was a spectacular run there. Kellen Lewis goes 75 yards to the house as Austin Starr comes in for the extra point. It is good. Kellen Lewis with the 15th rushing touchdown of his career. Lewis has some room and knows what to do with it. A couple of spectacular moves, and he turns on the Jets. Indiana has a 7-0 lead in the opener against Western Kentucky. We're coming back on the Big Ten Network. Kellen Lewis puts Indiana on top seven to nothing with a 75 yard run The play. The drive goes three plays 90 yards and takes just 52 seconds. Lewis with his 15th rushing touchdown of his career and Indiana leads at seven nothing. We're going to see if he's going to warm that passing arm up and throw a couple passing touchdowns now Tom. If he can continue to run like that there's no need to do that 75 yards on the play for explosive Kellen Lewis. Austin Starr to kick it away. This will be Cooper at the three. Cooper to the 20. And diving and falling forward to the 30. Now, when you look at this touchdown, this is the value of a spread offense. Number six, Blake Boyd ran right past him. And only one person on the Western Kentucky even had a shot at getting a hand on him. No one touched him. He went untouched all the way down the field. We said if you want to stop the spread offense, you can't miss tackles, Tom. Kellen Lewis very elusive showing off the skills that he has polished over the summer after a self reevaluation he said he was headed toward a downward spiral after last season but he is back on top today. K.J. Black short hops that one on first down for Western Kentucky. And what K.J. Black has to do is he has to win the battle on first down. He has to get at least four to five yards on first down to keep it second and third and manageable. If you get in the third and long, you're going to let that Indiana defense come after you, and you don't want to be in that position. So they have to get something positive on first down. You can't pull up an over on first down like that on a consistent basis. K.J. Black threw for better than 65% last year. Had two starts in 2007 and had to play in the opening game against Florida, which Western Kentucky lost because David Wolke, the starter and the transfer from Notre Dame, was injured in the game against the Gators. And that pitch is stopped short. Matt Mayberry, along with Nick Polk, making the stop on the ball carrier. Looking to enhance your game day experience, presenting the Rotel Ultimate Tailgate Package Sweepstakes. You could win an incredible grand prize package featuring a grill, barbecue set, delicious Rotel products, and everything else you'll need to support your team. Or other great weekly prizes to enter, log on to Big10Network.com and fill out your entry form. Third and 12 for the Hilltoppers. Six minutes, 13 seconds to go in the first quarter from Memorial Stadium. And the opener for the Hoosiers. A.J. Black is sacked. Will Patterson low. Mirando high. And it's fourth down for the toppers. And Mirando filling in for Middleton. You're not losing a step there with this guy filling in for Greg Middleton. You got two guys coming free on him. He really had, he couldn't take the ball up the middle and he couldn't get around the edge. 
the Hilltoppers' offensive line has to play better. They did some shuffling in that offensive line, Tom, and you can see there's no chemistry on the Hilltoppers' offensive line at this moment in the game. Jerry Moore will punt it away. Jeremy Moore, excuse me, Jeremy Moore to punt it away from Western Kentucky. Ray Fisher will receive from his own 31-yard line for the Hoosiers. Five minutes, 24 seconds to go in the first quarter. Indiana leads on a 75-yard touchdown scamper from Kellen Lewis. Fisher backtracks to the 27. Coming to the near side, gets away from one man. Fisher crosses the 40. Still on his feet at the 45 and across midfield, but a flag comes out. Back at the 43-yard line before you give all the helmet pats on the sideline for Indiana. Let's check on the flag, and there is a Western Kentucky player down at the 38-yard line. During the return, holding, return team, number 14. Penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Indiana will keep the ball, first down. The Time official out. call from referee Alex Kemp. So that will nullify the return by Fisher. Kevin Lewis coming back on the field for the Hoosiers, up 7-0. A look at the beautiful main gates here at Indiana University as the Hoosiers lead it 7-0. It was a season to remember last year in Champaign, and now the Illini look to prove it was no fluke. Go behind the scenes and see what it takes to win the Big Ten with Coach Ron Zook and the Illini all season long on Illinois Football The Journey. Premieres this Tuesday, September 2nd on the Big Ten Network. Five minutes, six seconds to go in the first quarter from Memorial Stadium, the opener for the Indiana Hoosiers as they host Western Kentucky and lead 7-0. Kellen Lewis pulls the trigger, and it's incomplete. And what Lewis has to do is he has to establish something in that passing game. He's got to find a new receiver to replace the departed James Hardy. James Hardy onto the NFL with the Buffalo Bills. 41st player taken overall in the NFL draft. His teammate Tracy Porter taken right before him by the New Orleans Saints as he was a defensive back on the Hoosier team last year. That pass complete to Terrence Turner. But there will not be a lot there, and another flag comes out. Tackle made by number two, Marcus Miner. There is a flag. Flag on the play on the completion to Turner. And here is Alex Kemp, our referee, one more time. After the play was over, personal foul. Defense, number 18. Penalty is 15 yards, automatic first down. Number 18 for Western Kentucky is Travis Waters. It, I'm a little disappointed in both of these teams because they're both very well coached. And, and you get a piling on penalty like that against uh, Western Kentucky. You can't, you, you held Indiana on first down. You can't afford to give him a first down plus 15 yards. Not a guy like Kellen Lewis. He'll make you pay for that, Tom. So the ball just beyond midfield. Quick swing to Fisher across midfield and bumped out of bounds. Marcus Miner made the contact to send Fisher out of bounds. And we can count on seeing that bubble screen a lot today from both teams. They have big receivers out there. Turner was out there trying to get the block for Fisher to free him up the field to make even more yards than he made on that screen. Called it second and six for head coach Bill Lynch in his second season here at Indiana. The first coach in school history in his first year to take his team to a bowl game. The inside bowl over the middle complete. Terrence Turner and a first down. And Turner ran a drag route there. Lewis connected with him, and you want to see Turner step up and make a play. He was out most of last season with an injury, but he looks like he's healed up on that play. So the chains will move for Indiana. Ball spotted at the 31 of Western Kentucky after the completion of Turner, and now Lewis throws it out to the outside edge, and this time looking for Turner, who was not looking at him. We've got a miscommunication between receiver and quarterback. And that's that's the subject of a guy who hasn't played a lot. This is Turner's first year back after an injury. He hasn't played a lot. And let's remember, they're running a no-huddle offense, so you have to communicate the signals out to the receivers and make sure the receivers and the quarterbacks are on the same page. Turner with a season-ending ACL injury at Iowa last year. Only had one catch all last season, so he has equaled his total already today as Western Kentucky will take a timeout. Four minutes, 22 seconds to go, second and 10 for Indiana. And let's check in with Megan West. We'll get to Megan in one second as David Elson 
converges with his team, trying to figure out how to stop Indiana here on second and 10. Well, the best way for them to stop Indiana is quit committing, quit making penalties and giving Indiana 15 yards here and let, you know, 15 yards here, 15 yards there. You can't make the mental mistakes. And a well-coached team like, like Western Kentucky, you don't expect that from them. And let's check in with Megan now. Gentlemen, you know, no one is having more fun when this first time meeting with Western Kentucky and Indiana than the coaches. Hilltoppers coach David Elson going up against one of the coaches he tells me he most admires. Now, his relationship with Bill Lynch, well, it goes way back. Besides both of them being former Butler players, Lynch at quarterback in the 70s, Elson following several years later at strong safety, goes even back further than that. Elson says that they're both from two very strong Irish Catholic families from Indy. We talk about their coaching staffs. Their majority have either played or coached together. Now, Elson and Lynch both with plenty of family here and one special person quite dear to both of them, their grade school coach, Bill Michalis. Now, he came to the walkthrough yesterday with the Hilltoppers, and game time today, well, he's with the Lynches. Thank you, Megan. The ties between these two teams and coaches running very deep, and here comes Indiana on the move. Now, that's Demetrius McCray, who on the play prior ran for a first down. This time, he is taken down for a loss. And that's the first time that they've stopped the Hoosiers behind the line of scrimmage since, since early in the first quarter. The Hoosiers are doing what they wanted to do. They want to establish that running game, and they're using more than just Thigpen. Remember, Thigpen is only 5'9", 190 pounds, although he said he gained 10 or 15 pounds <laughs> this offseason, Tom. Second and 12, and Thigpen wants to score a touchdown in the worst way. Did not score a TD last year. Had the most carries of any running back in the country without a touchdown. Quick little pass down to the five, and that is complete to Andrew Means. Andrew Means, he's playing where, where James Hardy played last year. So look for them to try to utilize him in the red zone. They feel like he's another special player. He spends his offseason playing baseball. Andrew Means playing minor league baseball in Billings, Montana, drafted by the Reds in the 11th round. Today, trying to catch some passes from Kellen Lewis on third and short. And they go with a quarterback sneak as Ben Chappell really snuck in there, but flags are down on the play. Number 79, penalty is five yards, third down. Cody Faulkner is number 79, a little bit anxious at a penalty against Indiana, and that will bring up third down it was third and one but now that'll move the football back and Chapel will come back out of the game that's a smart move putting Chapel in there because I wouldn't let Kellen Lewis run the ball on a short yardage play and let the defenders take a shot at him and hold on a second Tony Ben Chapel okay now they got it straight Chapel was looking over to the sideline looking for the play as if he was going to stay in the game and then no, no. Bill Lynch thought better of that. No, and Kellen no, Lewis no. is back in. Get your Heisman candidate <laughs> back on the field. Come on, coach. Ben Chappell, though, a lot of experience because he ran all the drills with the first team during the spring. When Kellen Lewis had the suspension over the middle, complete to Fisher. No, incomplete. Incomplete, but he had it. Western Kentucky's defenders laid the lick on him and jarred the ball out. Notice Kellen Lewis had a lot of time to throw, but he threw it right into the teeth of the safe, and that was Waters up there that laid the hit on him. So that'll bring up a field goal attempt for Indiana on the incompletion. I tell you what, when you get that hit ball in your hands and end zone, you got to find a way to secure it, Tom. You can't let those touchdowns slip through your hands because they don't come that often. 28-yard attempt from Austin Starr, the all-conference player from a year ago. Right down the middle for Star. So Indiana takes a 10 to nothing lead, the home opener from Memorial Stadium. More to come right after this. Welcome back now for Nissan's What It Takes to Get There. This week we focus on Indiana's prep for today's season opener. Started with the daily practice, then a Friday stadium walkthrough, dinner at the Bloomington Country Club, then travel to Bedford, about 30 miles away, stay overnight at the Stonehenge Hotel, and then early Saturday morning they are on the bus to Memorial Stadium. Sounds like a uh, vacation to me more than a <laughs> day before a game, Tom. Western Kentucky with the return up to the 28. That what it takes to get there brought to you by Nissan, Nissan Shift Performance. 
And you really see from that small graphic what goes into game day preparation. It's a very long process. And Tony, you know it from your days playing at Michigan. Once again, Tom, it sounded more like a vacation. Dinner at the country club. You stay at the <laughs> hotel in Bedford. Now, they weren't playing golf or anything, Tony. Don't get crazy now. <laughs> oh, man. But it, it, there is a lot that goes into it. And the coach takes them away from the campus to get those guys' mind to focus on the game. You want to seclude them a little bit keep the distractions away. Here comes K.J. Black and the Hilltoppers trailing 10 nothing to Indiana here in the first quarter. Two minutes, 27 seconds to go. Swings it out incomplete. And Jay Gabler, he started running before he got his hands on that ball. And Indiana started to sniff out that bubble screen because this is not the first time that the Hilltoppers have ran that screen today. They were successful on it once, but Indiana came up and made the play that time. Jake Gabler, one of the more sure-handed receivers for Western Kentucky, 35 catches a year ago, 426 yards, averaging over 12 yards per catch. And I'm going to make a point on that. Receivers, if you're out there listening, when you take your eyes off the ball, you won't catch it. You gotta look that ball in. Jake didn't do that on that play. Well, when you've got one of those Indiana linebackers bearing down on you, that changes the situation, Tony. And that was big Geno Johnson out there, right? <laughs> we got a guy like that out in space. As a matter of fact, if I'm Jake, I'm gonna get a linebacker out there guarding me. That's when the spread offense is particularly effective when you create the matchups that you want, getting linebackers on receivers. Offensive coordinator is Kevin Wright for Western Kentucky. A very successful high school coach in the state of Indiana, won three state championships. Black's pass is complete. This is Hayden. He's got some running room and finally brought down. I'm amazed at the amount of flags that I've seen between these two well-coached teams. Penalties are a lack of concentration, Tom. That's, that's where you get penalties from. And that play is coming back based on the posture of the Western Kentucky players. Clipping Western Kentucky, number 72. Penalty is half the distance of the goal from the previous spot. Second down. Shot blocks and clipping, clipping. that's going to be a point of emphasis for the referees throughout the year. So we're going to keep our eye on that. You go low on somebody, you take a shit, you're taking a chance. That's Derek Elder, number 72, for the Hilltoppers with the illegal block. Oh, yeah, you can see it right there. He came back on uh, Greg Brown and clipped him. And, 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 you, you hate to see that because those are the type of injuries that guys get knee, those are the type of plays that guys get knee injuries on, Tom. Second and 24 for Western Kentucky University. Just over two minutes to go here in the first quarter from Memorial Stadium. 10-0, the Hoosiers with the lead. Black goes right, nothing there. Coming back to the near side, and will run out of bounds before being confronted by Geno Johnson, number 56, who was bearing down on him. Actually, that was a smart pay play by K.J. Black. He just had a penalty. He rolls out. He had nothing there. He reversed his field, and he got some good positive yard. Rolls out. He doesn't see anything there. Reverses his field. He looks a little, he looks a little slow to me. <laughs> he looks a little slow to me. He's got to move a little faster than that. Kellen Lewis would have got a few more yards on that play, Tom. The sophomore from Louisville, Kentucky, here on third and 18 against this Indiana defense. Black complete. Gabler to lose a couple of tacklers, puts his head down. Crosses the 30-yard line will be well short of a first down for the Hilltoppers, the grab made by Gabler. And Gabler crossed the 30-yard line, but what you like to see if you're Indiana's defense is the whole defense converge. If you look back at Gabler on that play, every all 11 men on the defensive side of the ball were on top of that tackle. And that's what you want to see, a swarming defense that pursues well. Because if that ball pops out, I bet you one of the uh, Hoosiers is going to recover it. Jeremy Moore to punt it for Western Kentucky University. Ray Fisher stands at his 25, ready to receive the kick for the Hoosiers, who have a 10-0 lead in the final seconds of the first quarter. Fisher. Fisher will let it bounce. Bounding inside the 20 and covered inside the 15 by Western Kentucky. 
And let's go to Dave Resin in Chicago for an update. All right, Tom, we want to check in on Youngstown State and Ohio State. Buckeyes looking pretty good early on in this one. Beanie Wells explodes for the 43-yard touchdown here. Ohio State just got a field goal as well on a drive that was led by Terrell Pryor at quarterback. It's 13-0. Thank you, Dave. Here in Bloomington, it's 10-0 Indiana. 27 seconds to go in the first quarter. Did he sell the touchdown already? The highly touted freshman for Ohio State got on the board quick. Already in the game. Expecting great things from him in Columbus. Big pen to the left side. Not a whole lot there. It wasn't a whole lot there, but Tom, we have to touch on Kellen Lewis. He's doing everything that Indiana coaches told us that he would do. He's that special type of player. He has some abilities that other players just don't have. He can move vertically and he can move horizontally. Don't forget, Tony, he's one touchdown pass away from setting the school record that he now shares at 42 with Anton Randall L. He's going to do it running, though. He's already got a 75-yard touchdown run, and this time he explodes for a first down out across the 35. Kellen Lewis showing he can pick him up and put him down. That is the end of the first 15 minutes from Memorial Stadium. Indiana with the lead over Western Kentucky. The fans out for the opener, and the Hoosiers have the lead. The second quarter of the Big Ten Network coming up right after this. Indiana with a 10-0 lead over Western Kentucky here at Memorial Stadium. Indiana 119 rushing yards and 75 of those coming on a touchdown run from Kellen Lewis. The 15th rushing touchdown of his career and first of the season. Lewis throws looking for Fisher in the flat has to come back this way. And Fisher's in trouble and goes down. Gonna lose at least four on the play. And Tom, anytime you catch the ball out there and you start running back inside, you've got to deal with the pursuit of the defense. What what Fisher has to do is when he catches that ball, he has to turn it upfield and try to get positive yards and far forward. Even on a bad play, when he turns back inside right here, you, you're going right back into the teeth of the defense. And all the Hilltoppers are right there waiting to greet him with some hits. Second down and 14 on the loss of the play. That one complete. Andrew Means going up to get that one, and Means has a first down out to the 49-yard line. And, and I'll tell you what, if Darvis McBride, the Hilltoppers linebacker, number 40, kept his eyes on the ball, he could have taken that ball and walked into the end zone. He looked it all the way in. All he had to do was jump. But Means made a great play for the Hoosiers on the, 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 post, the post route. Andrew Means, 18 yards on the play. They will spot it officially at the 48. First and 10 for the Hoosiers as Kellen Lewis looks to the sidelines in this no huddle offense. Indiana has not huddled since the beginning of spring drills. Brian Payton gets his first chance to run this afternoon. And Payton with a nice gain on first down. And, and that's what Indiana's going to do. They're going to run Thidpin, Payton, and McCray and really try to establish that rushing game. You can't have your quarterback being your leading rusher every game and be successful in the Big Ten. Kellen Lewis was the leading rusher for this team a year ago. Another first down, but a flag comes out of the play. Lewis was 736 yards rushing and nine rushing TDs that led all Big Ten quarterbacks in 2007. Illegal substitution. Defense. The penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. That's the value of the no huddle offense. You create confusion and you don't allow the defense the opportunity to substitute. Sam Weiss from the Cincinnati Bengals came up with that a long time ago, didn't he, Tom? Sam Weiss, who was the quarterback, uh, the quarterback, he actually was a quarterback at Furman University, but he was also the head coach here at Indiana for one season back in 1983 as Thigpen gets the call. And I've had the chance to talk with Sam about the no huddle offense. And he said when he was with the Bengals, he saw the substitutions being made, big lumbering players leaving the field, the quicker players coming on for third down and fourth down plays. He said, why are we allowing that? Let's make it quicker and create a no huddle offense. And it has evolved into this. And it's being used by Indiana today. Lewis with a quick snap pass, and that's complete. Means with a spin, and he's down to the 21. And what did we talk about? What do we talk about in the spread offense? You have to have the ability to make people miss. You create one-on-one -on -one matchup. Right there, you see Means makes the defender miss, and he turns it up the field for positive yards. He almost took that to the end zone. 
First down from the 21 for Indiana, leading 10 to nothing here in the second quarter. Demetrius McCray. I like right the, up the middle for a short game. I like the way Matt Canada, the offensive coordinator for the Hoosiers, is mixing it up. He's throwing the bubble screen. He's throwing the short intermediate routes to the outside receivers, and he's running the ball in between the tackles. Matt Canada is in his second season as the offensive coordinator and fifth year as an assistant coach at Indiana. Matt Canada is an interesting story because actually in 1993 when this team went to the Independence Bowl, Canada was a student assistant on that team. And Bill Lynch was also an assistant on the team that went to the 93 Independence Bowl. So Indiana has a 10-0 lead and they are threatening timeout on the field here on the Big Ten Network, Western Kentucky and Indiana. Back to Memorial Stadium, Indiana with a 10-0 lead over Western Kentucky and threatening here with the ball spotted at the 16-yard line. The road to the championship by Advanced Auto Parts. It's week one of college football season, so we'll look at the Big Ten preseason media honors. Ohio State number one, followed by Wisconsin and Illinois. The Offensive Player of the Year, Beanie Wells from Ohio State. Defensively, James Laronitis, the linebacker from Ohio State. That is the road to the championship. Brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. Ben Chappell is into the game for Indiana. Here on third and two. And the Hoosiers tried this earlier with a sneak from Chapel on short yardage. This time he'll toss it. Cray puts the shoulder pads down, run out of bounds, very close to the first down marker. And I like the fact that they're getting Chapel involved in the game. I mean, he, they said he battled Lewis all the way to the end for the starting position. At least he's getting on the field. You'd like to see that from the Indiana coaching staff. Correction on the carry, Brian Payton. And his run, good enough for a first down. Pass complete to Fisher, who dives for the end zone touchdown. Whoa, that Ray was Fisher going all out for six for the Hoosiers. And that was close, but the ball crossed the plane before it hit the ground. That's why Ray Fisher got credited with that touchdown. The ground did cause the fumble on that time. Ray Fisher. Determined to get to the end zone, and he does so. Kellen Lewis, that touchdown pass, he is now the all-time leader in touchdown passes in Indiana University history. Ray Fisher we set with up his beginning. fifth yeah. career receiving touchdown, and that sets the record for Kellen Lewis. And we said at the beginning of the game, Kellen Lewis wanted to throw one touchdown pass today. And he did it. Austin Starr with the extra point. So it's Kellen Lewis to Ray Fisher, 11 yards, and the last few of them, the hard way by Fisher. Indiana up 17-0. Indiana with a 17-0 lead over Western Kentucky. Kellen Lewis is now thrown for 73 yards and one touchdown pass. This is the record breaker. Case study on the spread offense, Tom. You spread the whole defense out. You find the holes, and you exploit it. You get to the holes of the defense. Ray Fisher went over the top for the touchdown. Completing a 12-play drive for the Indiana Hoosiers. Took up four minutes, 15 seconds. Fisher, the 11-yard catch from Lewis. Tom, I'm impressed with the fact the Hoosiers appeal to be, appear to be very well conditioned. They're not getting tired. They're running that no-huddle offense, 12, 13-play drives, and scoring at the end of it. They're capping them off the right way. Kickoff from Starr. Cooper. Hit and dropped. Fennell Jones making the play on special teams, but there's Kellen Lewis on the sideline. <laughs> Nine of 12, 73 yards, one touchdown, and a 75-yard rushing touchdown as well. Very efficient thus far for Mr. Lewis. What's that, about 80% throwing, and, he, and he's ran for almost 100 yards already. Already, it's not even the first first half isn't even finished yet. Could Kellen Lewis actually set a school record last year, Tony, throwing for 60 percent on the season. <laughs> Western Kentucky.
Kentucky goes to Darius Brooks on the carry. And they had they they tried to hit him with a little misdirection, but it didn't didn't fool the uh, Hoosiers. And uh, Geno Johnson was out there ready to make the uh, play for the Hoosiers, and he got that done. But I think the Hilltoppers have to try something. They haven't been getting anything on first down. And in order to be successful against a good defense, you got to win the battle on first down and get it in second and third and manageable situations. You talk to the folks here in Bloomington, they are excited about this defense that set a school record with 42 sacks a season ago. That was eighth best in the nation, but consider in 2006, they only had 14 sacks for the season. This time it's KJ Black getting it done with the run. And KJ out of bounds. And KJ's a big guy. He's not afraid to pull the ball down and try to get some positive yards upfield. When he takes the ball around the side, he has the option to pitch it or keep it. He fakes the pitch. He looks out there with a head fake, but he takes the ball right on up the field. Nick Polk, the safety, came over to knock him out of bounds. 23-yard rush from K.J. Black. And Will Patterson tried to get him around the shoestrings, just could not as K.J. Black shows us he has some speed for his large frame. 6'4", 215, the sophomore from Louisville, Kentucky. He's a big boy, Tom. Big boy. First and 10, 9.52 to go here in the second quarter. That is Hayden, and he is swallowed under by a bunch of red jerseys. And Hayden's their leading rusher, but what K.J. Black and the Hilltoppers offense has to do is they have to get the receivers involved in the game. They haven't had a receiver with a play over 10 to 15 yards up to this point. If they want to compete with Indiana, they've got to make some plays down the field now. They can't keep settling for one and two yards per carry, Tom. K.J. Black has completed four passes on the game. His longest completion, 10 yards during the game. See, and in order to win on a consistent basis, you have to have at least five or six plays over 20 yards in the game. They don't have any going into halftime almost. Second and eight. Black wants the throw, goes back the other way. And that's a sliding grab right there from Gabler. Tonight on the Big Ten Network, Adam Weber and the Gophers look to start the season off right as they battle a tough Northern Illinois squad. Tonight, 7 Eastern on the Big Ten Network. That is our prime time contest here on the Big Ten Network. Back here in Indiana, you saw the construction in the north end zone, a $40 million project going on here at Memorial Stadium as they continue to upgrade the facilities here in Bloomington. They also have a new a new turf down there on the field. They got the field turf with the little rubber <laughs> specks in it. They had some severe flooding during the summer and switched out the turf to the new field turf as K.J. Black felt some pressure and short hops and pass, again looking for Gabler. Yeah, when you look at that, that's 100,000 square foot, $55 million in renovation. Things like this are going to help IU be able to compete with some of the other schools in the Big Ten in terms of recruiting when you have nice facilities like this, when you have a new field down there. IU is coming. They feel very optimistic about this year, about their recruiting, about the direction that this program is headed in. Everybody feels the attitude is changing, especially after a visit to the Insight Bowl last year and the way they dramatically won that game against Purdue on the last second field goal by Austin Starr to take back the old Oaken bucket. Polk makes a fair catch and drops it. Did he fall on it? Yes, he did. He did indeed, as the official signal that Polk dropped it and then covered it as the Hoosiers will start inside their own 10 yard line. So, a collective holding of the breath here at Memorial Stadium. Polk, just a little bit of a miscue, but he gets back on the ball and his team leads 17 0. Bill Lynch and his Indiana Hoosiers have a 17 0 lead over Western Kentucky as they open up the 2008 season. Coming up next, it's the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime show. Dave Revson, Howard Griffith, and Jerry DiNardo with Big Ten highlights and Big Ten action. That's coming up, our halftime show, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Demetrius McCray gets the call as Indiana goes to the ground on first and ten. And then Indiana's attempting to run the ball. They have that big offensive line with with McCray trying to get some yardage behind those guys. What do they call them, Tom? The seven blocks of limestone. Yes. Five they're... of those guys from the 2006 class are starting for Indiana today with two as the backup. That offensive line's got to be tough for them to make a deep run in the Big Ten this year. Yep, Roger Saffold and Pete Saxon on the left side of that line. 
Both of them started every game last season. And now let's check in with Megan. Hey, gentlemen, you know, you were talking about the new facilities going on here in Bloomington. Of course, the basketball facility, uh, they're getting a new practice facility. But here at Memorial Stadium behind me, if you can take a look at this, on the lower level here behind the Crimson and Cream banner, there's going to be a 24,000 square foot new weight room up above an extra 1,100 seats. The coaches' offices are actually going to look out onto the stadium. You can imagine how much that's going to help recruits. Not only are they going to have offices in here, meeting rooms, a new weight room, training table, the players will actually eat here, and the academic area will be here as well. So actually, the coaches tell me these players are never going to have to leave, except to go to class. Back to you. <laughs> Let's hope they attend class. That is a priority here. In fact, the listing of the priorities on the board is to become an excellent student in the locker room for Indiana as Kellen Lewis scrambles, goes up the sideline, tiptoes it, gets across the 30 for a first down, and now is spun out of bounds. Okay, Tom, and I really don't even know where to begin on that play. When Kellen Lewis when Kellen Lewis rolls out, he's always looking to throw the ball first, which is great. But once he figures out he doesn't have anywhere to throw, so he turns on the athleticism, tiptoes down the sideline, and gets a positive game. A play that could have been a loss or any other quarterback might have thrown away. Kellen Lewis gets, what, an 11-yard gain off of it? I mean, <laughs> several players sprawled in the wake of Kellen Lewis. Remember we talked about, in his mind, the game slows down for him. So he's always a step or two ahead of everyone else. That was a prime example of Kellen Lewis being Kellen Lewis. We will take a timeout from Bloomington, Indiana, seven. 17 nothing. The Hoosiers lead it. Kellen Lewis and his team looking for the win here at the home opener. Indiana leads Western Kentucky 17 to nothing. Kellen Lewis now 112 yards rushing on the game, the third time in his career that he has crossed the century mark on the ground. That pass complete to Andrew Means. <laughs> And Andrew Means is putting together a nice afternoon for himself today. They moved him from the inside position to the outside, outside receiver where Hardy played last year. And I'm sure if Hardy's watching this game, he's proud of what Means is doing for the Hoosiers offense. Fifth catch of the day for Andrew Means, putting together a very nice afternoon. Swing pass, Fisher. Gets away from the grasp of one man and crosses midfield. <laughs> Termination from Ray Fisher, who has a touchdown catch this afternoon. Remember, every time, everything you hear about the spread offense, you have to tackle. You have to make tackles. You can't miss tackles against the spread offense. Hilltoppers are doing that, and that's what's keeping them from being in this game right now. First and 10, Indiana. Five minutes, 54 seconds to go in the second quarter. Finally, we got a tight end involved in the game, Tom. Max Dedman gets his name called as he makes the catch. They call him Baby Dallas Clarks. They, <laughs> they said he can do some of the things that the Colts tight end can do. We'll see. At 6'5", 236, there is nothing baby about him, the redshirt freshman from Evansville, Indiana. Big pen. And that'll bring up third and about four. And he, and he was knocked Indiana. down by uh, McBride. McBride has been all over the field making plays everywhere for the Hilltoppers. But I think their defense is on the field too long. It's a ni nice 85-degree day, and those guys are going to start to wear out in the second half. Hilltoppers need to make a play now, a turnover or something, to generate some positive momentum. Third and four. Lewis. Pass batted at the line. Blake Boyd. Yeah, it was Boyd, number six. We got a hand on that one. How tall is he? He looks pretty tall from up here. Blake Boyd, 6'2", 250, the junior from Madisonville, Kentucky. And that's that's the strength of this uh, defense as well. They're linebackers with Higgins, Boyd, and McBride. Those guys have been making some plays. But once again, the Hilltoppers need a momentum changer right now. For, they need to keep this score under 20 going into the half. Yeah, this could be it as Indiana elects to punt this one away with five minutes and four seconds to go in the second quarter. Chris Hogger up. Punting for the Hoosiers. And that was not one of his best, as they will mark it at the 31. What he was trying to do is he was trying to position that ball right at about the 9 or 10 yard line. Remember what I said earlier in the game. When you start the ball, when the, when the offense starts inside the 20, they have a significantly less chance of scoring a touchdown. This game is brought to you in part by Nissan. Nissan is the official vehicle of the Big Ten Conference shift performance. 
Chris Hogger up the red shirt freshman from Whitefish Bay Wisconsin. Actually took some snaps at quarterback in spring practice. Western Kentucky keeps it simple here on first down and under they, five minutes to go in the second quarter. And I know that's the bread and butter of their game, their rushing offense with Tyrell Hayden, but they can't keep running into the teeth of the Indiana defense and expect to make this game competitive. They've got to make a big play with their outside receivers at some point, Tom. They need something over 20 yards. 34 total rush yards in the game so far for Western Kentucky. Second and eight for the Hilltoppers. K.J. Black, the quarterback. Sophomore from Louisville, Kentucky. Black with a handoff. And that Indiana defense, it was like they knew it was coming. Another thing that the Hilltoppers offense has to do, they have to sustain a drive to keep their defense off the field. Remember, Indiana's running that no-huddle offense. Their defense has got, has got to be getting tired. And what is it? It's third and long now. That's when the defense can pin their ears back, they can blitz you, or, or they can just sit back and let you complete something underneath, come up and make the play. It is third and six. Indiana crowding the box. Look at the linebackers coming up there. Pressure complete. And a first down play. And that's what they needed. They needed to get a first, they need to get a first down. Jesse Quinn made that crossing route and got the first down for him. Now they give their defense a chance to rest for another three or four minutes, Tom. Those guys need it. They've been out there a lot against Kellen Lewis and at IU offense. First down from the 45 for the Hilltoppers. Booker in the backfield with KJ Black. Black will keep it himself. And Miranda got in his way, as well as several other Hoosiers. And it's that defensive line. It's Greg Brown also into the play number 62. It's that defensive line that only allowed the Hilltoppers to get one yard. Now you're looking at a second and nine. When you're the offensive coordinator, it's hard to call plays at second and nine. It's easy to call plays at third and one, third and two, keeping things manageable. That's what the Hilltoppers have to work to do to get back in this game. Rushing a season ago for K.J. Black. 324 yards on the season, average 3.1 a carry. This time he'll hand it off. Western Kentucky content to run the ball here after converting on third down through the air. And once again, you want to get it at third and under five, not third and six. That's the advantage for the defense. Anytime it's third and over five. Got a great look at number 56, Geno Johnson, the senior from Bartow, Florida. Western Kentucky on third down, just one of six in the game. Indiana, not too much better, two of five. From the 49 yard line. Black will throw. Incomplete looking for Gabler. And that's because he had pressure. It's like that was Curlew coming off over there on him, getting the pressure, applying the pressure. He threw the ball behind Gabler, didn't get the chance to make the completion. And if Jabler, Gabler had caught that ball, once again, he was going right into the teeth of that IU defense. And that defense is definitely the strength of the Hoosiers this year. Well, I don't know. The offense is playing well, too, man. Maybe they're just strong all around. <laughs> With a 17 0 lead, things going the way of Indiana as Ray Fisher waits back at his 10 yard line for the punt from Jeremy Moore, the junior from Indianapolis. This is Ray Fisher's first season returning punts for Indiana. He will stay away from this one. And wow, what a punt for Moore as it rolls out of bounds at the nine yard line. So Indiana will take over first and 10 after the punt from Moore. The Big Ten Network looking for its most passionate fans with Big Ten super fans. The Big Ten Network wants to reward its loyal viewers with chances to win great prizes like tickets to a Big Ten game, autograph memorabilia, and much more. Register now at Big10Network.com. Beautiful day here in Bloomington, Indiana.
The Tom. fans have turned out for the home opener here against Western Kentucky. 17 nothing Hoosiers so far. And Tom, did you notice that uh, Polk wasn't in there returning that punt for him? Coach Lynch got him out of there. You drop one, you're not going to return any more for me because that could be a game changer for the Hilltop as a turnover. Indiana has won its last six home openers. Ray Fisher caught the pass but didn't go much further than that as Blake Boyd laid the stick on him. And Blake Boyd's been all over the field. The and Fisher a little slow to get up here, Tony. And that could be that could be huge for them, but they do have a, a lot of receivers. They want to get in young receivers. They they think Belcher may get in. The mistake that Fisher made here is he started running toward the sideline. You've got to plant and go up the field. Boyd took the pursuit angle. And the rest <laughs> the rest is history. Is that a situation, Tony, where maybe he but, might, might have fallen on the ball, lost his wind? Hold on one second, Tony. Join host Mike Hall as he and his crew take you around the conference each week with a fun, unique look at every campus. Join them next week in Champaign on the Big Ten Friday night tailgate, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. Illinois taking on Eastern Illinois in that game. So look for the Friday night tailgate right here on the Big Ten Network. So Fisher returns to the sidelines. Second and 12 for Indiana. To the ground with Brian Payton, but a flag thrown almost immediately. And it's usually a holding when it's in that general vicinity. Indiana up 17 nothing. One minute, five seconds to go here in the second quarter. And we're still waiting for the official word. Holding offense, number 64. Penalty is half the distance to the goal line. Second out. That'll go against Pete Saxon, the junior from Plain City, Ohio. And you can see his arms are outside of the framework of the defender's body. Anytime they see your arms wrap around a defender, the referee is definitely going to call that penalty. Second and 15 under a minute to play here in the second quarter. Lewis on second down. And Indiana not trying to be tricky, going straight ahead here. And the final seconds take away here in the second quarter. And when they're backed up like that, you can see them go to the two tight end offense. That's almost a sure fire hit that they're going to run a bootleg pass or they're going to try to run it up the seam just to get out of harm's way and give, give yourself a little room so you can operate. It's hard to call plays when your back is up against your own end zone. And Indiana does not necessarily have to run a play here. Western Kentucky will not take a timeout. The game clock is down to five seconds and they will indeed let it run out. So we've got 30 minutes of the books from Memorial Stadium. Our halftime score is 17 nothing Indiana. Coming up it's the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime show from our Big Ten football Saturday studios in Chicago. You're watching Big Ten football on the Big Ten Network as the Hoosiers lead at halftime. Memorial Stadium it is a 17 nothing advantage for the Hoosiers over the Hilltoppers. And right now let's check in with Megan West who had a chance to talk to the head coach of the Hoosiers Bill Lynch. Thanks, Tom. I did speak with him just a few moments ago about being over there, at least halfway over their average of 32 points a season last year. He says offense looking good. He's really, really happy about how the defense is playing. And while he's giving the no huddle the debut of it today, a thumbs up so far saying he likes it. He says these penalties just have to be avoided. Thank you, Megan. As we get set for the second half kickoff, Indiana was the most penalized team last season by yardage. Penalties for 709 yards. So that's certainly a, an area of concern for head coach Bill Lynch as we look forward to the second 30 minutes from Memorial Stadium and a 17-0 lead for Indiana. Western Kentucky is in the white, Indiana in the cream and crimson. Here comes Marcus Thigpen. Out of his own end zone, up to about the 12-yard line. Correction, up to the 17. And now let's revisit today's Suzuki 
ATV's keys to the game with Tony McGee. And the keys to the game, Western Kentucky, they haven't, uh, running game success, they haven't had it. They have a total of 42 yards containing Lewis. I mean, he scored in the air, he scored with his legs. Indiana's defense has done everything that the Hoosier staff wanted them to do. They've been aggressive and they hit hard. And the no-huddle offense has provided some points and some confusion, and it's keeping the uh, Hilltoppers defense on the field like it's supposed to do. So Indiana will start first and 10. The ball officially spotted at the 18. Kellen Lewis, who ran for 112 yards in the first half, the third time in his career that he has gone over the century mark. And Tom, let's put this in perspective, okay? The first half of the game, he already has 112 yards. I mean, he's less than, what, 980 yards from 1,000, and this is only the first game. He's got 12 more to go. You can expect a big year from Kellen Lewis. It's good to see him back in the Hoosier Crimson. Rushed for over 700 last year while throwing for over 3,000 yards for the Hoosiers who went seven and six and went to the inside bowl. Big pen. Not a lot for Thick Ben right there. That's Boyd again. We called his name several times in the first half, Tony. And, Bo and Boyd is playing well. But Thick Ben, you know, he we need to get the Hoosiers need to get him involved in the game. That's who they want to run the ball a lot and make yardage. He lost yardage on that one. And the Hoosiers have a situation where it's third and nine. That's not a Mansville down for them as well. So on the first possession of the second half, the Hoosiers, third and long. And that one is picked off. Tremendous play by the Western Kentucky defense. Trent Calhoun comes up with the interception. That is the first of his career. And this is a team that intercepted 20 balls last year, 10th best in the country, Tony. And what Calhoun did is he, is he stepped in front of the receiver. And that's what you have to do. You have to have that anticipation. And, Tom, we talked about the fact that they needed a big play to change the momentum. That turnover gives them the ball at their own 33-yard line, gives them the best field position that they've had all day. Calhoun just stepped right in front of Turner to make that interception. So Bill Lynch is an interested onlooker right now for Western Kentucky. The best thing that possibly could have happened has, and they have great field position. Black throws, looking deep. It is complete to Gabler. Loses the ball inside the five. It is loose. Indiana says they have it, and they do. Wow. So Gabler made the catch that fumbled inside the five, and the Hoosiers get the ball right back. And that's, that's what... K.J. Black, when you have an opportunity like that as a quarterback, you have to make something happen. The, the Hoosier defender put his head right on the ball to knock it out. And Indiana, being the pursuing defense that they are, they were able to come up with the fumble recovery. K.J. Black's dropping back. Who was that that came over? Oh, that was Thomas. Austin Thomas came over to make the hit. Thomas averaged, what, eight tackles a game? That was a big fumble calls fumble that he had there for the Hoosiers. The leading tackler from last year's team, Austin Thomas, and the Hoosiers get the ball right back. Not the best field position in the world as they start from their own one. So Western Kentucky, just when they thought they had the momentum changing play, they give the ball right back. Great grab from Gabler, just couldn't hang on to it. But KJ, KJ Black, as a, as a quarterback, he has to lead his team to points. They could have came away with a quarter, with a field goal or something. Now you got Cape win for the uh, Hoosiers. So Ben Chappell called upon one more time. And... Chapel has come in in a couple of short yardage situations thus far today. Brian Payton gets the carry, smashes his way for a couple of hard-earned yards. And all they're trying to do right there is get a little bit of room so they can operate, give themselves a few more options, because when you're backed up, it's just hard to call plays when your back is to your goal line like that. That's almost like the blessing and the curse of getting a fumble down there but at least you stop the other team from scoring. So Chapel remains in the game. A sophomore from Bloomington has to throw it from his own end zone and made a wise choice because the pressure was bearing down on him. And that'll bring up a punting situation for Indiana. And that was a veteran move by Chapel because he did not, <laughs> let me repeat, did not take a sack for safety in his own end zone. 
but the Hilltoppers should still get good field position out of this, and that's the value of causing turnovers. Even when you turn the ball over back to them, you still get good field position. Hogger up will punt from his end zone. That is Gabler, the receiver who fumbled on the play for Western Kentucky to give the ball back to Indiana. They go three and out, and here comes the punt. Bounces and goes out of bounds. Will be marked at the 38-yard line. So great field position again for Western Kentucky after the punt from Hogger up. 17-0, Indiana. The Indiana Hoosiers with a 17-0 lead over Western Kentucky. Big Ten tonight is your ultimate source for all things Big Ten. It's the nightly show for highlights, analysis, and all of today's action, interviews, and so much more. Big Ten tonight, 11 p.m. Eastern, 10 Central, only on the Big Ten Network. And the first play for Western Kentucky. As Black on his back, covering that football in a loss on the play of eight yards. And, and that's what they can't afford to do. He has to be able to make something happen on first down instead of um, not getting a snap from center and losing, would he lose, uh, eight yards on that play. Second, now it's second down and 18. Tom, once again, that's very hard for Kevin Wright, the offensive coordinator, to, make, to call plays when you're backed up like that. So Black wants to throw on second down. It is complete. And inside the 40. You got that. And Tristan Jones, a tight end. We haven't seen very much of him today. We have seen a lot of Geno Johnson, though. 56 has been in on several tackles throughout the ball game. It is now 30 and 12 for Western Kentucky, trailing 17 to nothing. Second possession of the second half. They have had great field position in both instances. Again, those Indiana linebackers playing very close to the line of scrimmage. Black tries to roll and throw. Eludes one man. Gets it away. And it's complete. Down to the 12. Quinterrence Cooper makes the grab. First and goal for the Hilltoppers. And Tom, that's what they needed to do. They needed to get a play that was over 20 yards. And Quinterrence Cooper made that play for him. But KJ Black. He made this play with his leg because he approached the line of scrimmage li like he was going to run, and then Cooper secured the catch for the first down inside, almost inside the 10-yard line. First catch of the game for Cooper. The pitch goes to when well Graves, and he'll get a couple of yards on the play, maybe. This is still a good series because they can possibly come away from here with some points, and if they get at least a field goal, then it's only a two-touchdown game. And when you look at the yards that Indiana has versus the Hilltoppers, that's good for them at this point in time. So it was Graves actually being pushed back on the play. It'll be second and goal. Ball spotted just inside the 10-yard line. K.J. Black, 9 of 14, 97 yards in the game. Wants to throw again, looking to the end zone. And it's incomplete. He was looking for Cooper one more time. Coverage was there by Chris Atkins. And Atkins just locked him up, but it looked like they had a little hand gesturing going on well, well down the field, well into the end zone. So now it is third and goal. Chris Atkins, the redshirt freshman from Indianapolis. 6'1", 185 pounds on the coverage for Indiana. So this is a huge play in the game for the Hilltoppers, trailing 17 to nothing, third and goal from just inside the 10-yard line. Black has a little bit of time. Now being pressured, throws to the end zone, and it's well wide of the intended receiver. Very mature play for Black. He didn't take a loss. He didn't take a sack. He gives them a chance to come on and kick the field goal and at least get on the scoreboard. So it'll be a field goal attempt for the Hilltoppers. Zach Minturn to attempt the first field goal of his college career, the junior from Cincinnati. 
and he makes it. So Western Kentucky gets on the board, but they trail the Hoosiers 17 to three. Back in Indiana for the kickoff from Western Kentucky. Here comes Marcus Thigpen across the 20 and up to the 25, and a flag comes out late. Beyond the play as Thigpen returns it up to the 25-yard line, and we'll wait to sort out that penalty. As Thigpen comes off the field after the return, Marcus Thigpen, the most carries in the during the return NCAA holding, football. Indiana, number 21, penalty is 10 yards from the end of the run. First down. So it is against Indiana. But right now, we welcome in one of the newer faces here on campus, the head coach of the basketball team, Tom Crane. Tom, great to have you with us. Thank you. Here great to be with you. In our beautiful view of oh, Memorial incredible Stadium. incredible view. So, tell I'm going to see if I can stay when we're done here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about the experience. You said this is the first time you've been here for a football game. It is, it, 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 and it's, it's amazing. It's great to be in a college football environment. I mean, we loved the nine years at Marquette, but the one thing you didn't have are the Saturday afternoon football games. And my wife grew up on football and, and for us to be here watching this is really, really special. As the pass is complete for Indiana, that is Means making the grab. Now, Coach, you have a lot of connections, not only with Indiana now, because you're the head basketball coach, but also with Western Kentucky. Tell us about that a little bit. Well, the last time we saw Western Kentucky play football, my father-in-law, Jack Harbaugh, was the head coach, and they won a national championship. Back in 2002. In 2002 yeah. in Chattanooga, Tennessee, over McNeese State. <laughs> and, you uh, remember it, was, it well, oh, obviously. It was one of the yeah. greatest moments of our life, and certainly one of the greatest sporting moments to be a part of that and it, and it brings back a lot of memories seeing western on that sideline though the uniforms the helmets all those things are a lot different but, you, uh, you've got your brother and brothers-in-law in the coaching ranks with jim harbaugh at stanford and john is the head coach of the ravens absolutely jim who had a great nfl career played for the colts and, and really laid some claims to being a part of that franchise here won his first game the other night against oregon state he's now the head coach at stanford and John Harbaugh, who's the head coach of the Baltimore Ravens, was an assistant here for one season to Cam Cameron, who is now his offensive coordinator. So, Coach, what's it look like with the basketball season coming up? <laughs> well, you, you had to bring that up, didn't Tony you? Tony, he couldn't wait to ask that question. <laughs> we, you know I'm what? a Hoosier. I wanted to play here. I you understand. Know? We're, ready to, we're ready to go. Our guys are all back now, and we start school Tuesday. And finally, Wednesday, we get to do what's the most enjoyable, which is get on the court with them, help them get better, help them build their confidence. And... Get ready to do this. Now, do you have any basketball players that could possibly play football? Because we see a lot of that happening. Basketball players, mid-range basketball players coming out being all-stars on the football field. Oh, I, I think of that John Harbaugh's actually got one right now that played at Western Michigan, a young man named Joe Wrights who's from Indiana. I'm more interested in finding out if we can get some of these football, football players, players to come play basketball. That's Kellen what Lewis, need. huh? Oh, we take him. <laughs> I don't think they're giving him up. I don't think they're, his excitement, if we can excite the crowd the way he has, we're going to be in business. Coach, you really don't have a whole much of a problem trying to motivate folks and get excited about Indiana basketball. But what sort of changes have you already witnessed in your short time on campus as far as the football program is concerned as they went to great heights last year to make a bowl game the first time since 1990 and 91 when they went to back-to-back -back bowls. And now this year, they try to do it again and go to a bowl game one more time. Well, they're the leaders of the university when it comes to sports right now. Their work ethic, their attitude, their desire to compete is really what's gonna set the tone for all of us. And being a part of this since the beginning of April and watching them perform in spring practice, watching them throughout the summer, they've got a tremendous work ethic. Tell me about your relationship with Coach Lynch and maybe what you've gleaned from him and the conversations you've had with him prior to the start of your season as he gets going here in 08. Well, I knew a lot about him because of being in a football family. And then Tim Buckley, who's an assistant for me, was a, was a co-coach with, uh, with, with Bill at Ball State. He was the basketball coach. Certainly Bill was the football coach. So I knew a lot about him. Bill has been unbelievably instrumental to me in helping us. When we were going through our hardest moments, uh, in the spring with trying to get this team right. He was there for me every time I asked, and I'm a huge fan of what he's doing. A huge fan. Ball tipped and incomplete with Indiana with a 17-3 lead. As we look forward maybe a little more to the basketball season, uh, what excites you the most about being here at Indiana? I think the fans. We had a, a, an event yesterday for incoming freshmen. There were probably 3,000 to 3,500 of them in Assembly Hall. Coach Lynch spoke, Felicia Jack, our great women's coach, spoke. I had a chance to speak. And if that was only 3,500 people, that was one of the loudest places I've been. I mean, I can't wait for our team to compete in front of the fans, in front of this Hoosier Nation. I think we're seeing some of it today, even though we're not back in school yet. 
I, I think that's what excites me the most. And like I said, getting back on the courts, you know, with a with a brand new team, you know, we're, we're very understanding that it is that, and we're going to have to have some perspective. But to get back on the court with a group of guys that want to compete and represent the school the right way. Lastly, tell me what your team, what are those main goals for this basketball season? I think it's got to be the daily improvement, figuring out how we can gauge that. I don't think we can initially get so caught up in the numerical numbers and what we are as far as wins and losses. I mean, we have absolutely 1.2 points a game coming back, and he's out for the next 10 weeks with a knee injury. So we have a long way to go in that department. But uh, this is not good. But uh, <laughs> Not good at all. See, well, his coach, yeah, he's always coach, coaching, right? But hopefully. He, he's hope watching the play, and the play was made by Quinn as the, as the punt by Hoggeroff. He, he actually had trouble handling it, dropped it, tried to run with it, and then Quinn made the tackle. So, again, Western Kentucky will get great field position. And you've got to be torn. You've got all those connections with Western Kentucky, yet here you are at Indiana now as the head no, basketball I'm not coach. torn whatsoever. <laughs> Wait a minute now. Indiana <laughs> signs my check. I'm not torn whatsoever. My father-in-law had a great career there. He's in their Hall of Fame. Uh, we loved our time at Western. We love following him, but we're at Indiana. We're all IU. All right, so Western Kentucky takes over here. They have a field goal so far in the second half. Trail Indiana 17-3. K.J. Black is the quarterback. Black with the run. Stays on his feet and gets the first down. I like what KJ Black did and tried instead of trying to outrun the defender to the outside he split the defender side he split the defender and got the first down and you don't usually see that from a quarterback that hasn't had that many centers had that many snaps under center secondly he didn't play that much that was a great play by him to get the first down keep the chains moving and hopefully you know for the Hilltoppers take advantage of this opportunity fresh set of downs for Western Kentucky head coach Tom Crean is joining us here in the booth as Western Kentucky goes to the ground on that defense from Indiana, surges and makes a stop. Coach, thanks so much for stopping by, and best of luck with the basketball season, and, and uh, hopefully we'll see a lot of victories for your team across the way at Assembly Hall. Well, I appreciate it. It's great to be with you guys and great to be a part of this league and following your network as close as we do. We really appreciate we'll it. We'll be looking for the Hoosers this Thank year, you. Coach. <laughs> thanks Alrighty. a lot. Coach, thanks so much for Thank your time. You. Enjoy the rest of the ball Thank game. You. The head coach of the Indiana Hoosiers as he embarks on his first season, Tom Crean, Kind enough to spend some time in the booth with us during our opening game broadcast here on the Big Ten Network here at Memorial Stadium. Quinn makes the grab, dances down to the 20-yard line, and has another first down for the Hilltoppers as we go to Dave Revson in Chicago for an update. Okay, Tom, Ohio State comfortably ahead of Youngstown State, but some really bad news for the Buckeyes. You see Beanie Wells fumble there. The reason he fumbled is because he had some major pain in his foot. You see him grabbing the foot there. He had to be helped off the field. Was not able to put any pressure on it at all. We'll update you as soon as we know more on Beanie Wells. Right now, and that is not a good sight for Ohio State. Thank you. Information on Beanie Wells, preseason Heisman candidate for Ohio State. And we'll update you on his condition as the afternoon progresses. Right now, the Hilltoppers in the midst of a drive. K.J. Black taken down. Tom, just picking up on Beanie Wells possibly being hurt. When you when you have a spread offense and, and Ohio State's run, if your running back or your quarterback gets hurt, that can have a direct impact on the type of seasons you're going to have. That's why if I'm the Hoosiers, I don't want Kellen Lewis to get 100 yards rushing the game because that means no one else is rushing that much. Lewis does have 108 yards rushing in the ball game and a 75-yard touchdown burst in the first quarter. Ryan Mirando. Making the tackle on the previous play, Mirando seeing action because Greg Middleton, the all-conference defensive end, suspended for this game. K.J. Black scrambles, runs, and is out of bounds inside the 10. It'll be first and goal for the Hilltoppers. And right now, K.J. Black is showing a lot of maturity. He's running the offense. He's making something out of nothing. When the pass rush converges on him, he's taking the ball, and he's running, getting that first down for him. When he drops back, he's getting good protection from his offense line. He scans the field. He sees a little pressure, fills it to his left side. He takes off to his right side. He's got his eye on that first down marker, making sure he gets the first down. Ten rushes for 52 yards for K.J. Black, and it's first and goal one more time for the Hilltoppers, who have really controlled play here in the second half, and they've been helped out by great field position. Now they'll play a little ball control and move it down to about the five. We call it the six-yard line of Indiana. Tom, I felt like if the Hilltoppers could keep the score, uh, if they could stay within 10 points of the Hoosiers going into fourth quarter, at that point they really have a chance. With this spread offense, you make somebody miss, and we've got a great game on our hands. So I think it's going to pick up around here, especially if they score on this drive. But they, they, they can't settle for a field goal. They need to try to score a touchdown. 
So we'll see if the Indiana defense can respond one more time. Given up just three points so far this afternoon inside of five minutes here in the third quarter. Second and goal from the six. Black's pass is complete, but an immediate play by that defense. That is Will Patterson. And that's the tackle. And that's what you would expect to make the play for, for the Hoosiers. They've talked about their linebackers being the strength of the defense. It was a simple crossing route. Patterson sniffed it out. He comes up and just picks up the back in the flat. That was Steven Willis who made the catch, but Patterson was all over him. You've got to like, you've got to like what KJ Black is doing. He's controlling the tempo of the game now. A one-yard loss on the play. Third and goal from the seven. Black, a couple of steps to his left. Eludes one man. Gets down to the five, and he's taken down there. Matt Mayberry, number 43, making the stop on K.J. Black. And the, the, the coaches are very high on Matt Mayberry in terms of his size, speed, and strength. And this is the first play that he's made all day against K.J. Black right there. Matt Mayberry played in every single game last season, had a career-high eight tackles in the Insight Bowl. Zach Minturn will come on to attempt a 22 yard field goal. And Minturn is now two for two. Three more points on the board for Western Kentucky. David Elson and his Hilltoppers trying to climb back in this one. Indiana leads it 17 to 6. Indiana with a 17 to 6 lead over Western Kentucky in the first ever meeting between these two schools as Western Kentucky makes its transition to the football bowl subdivision. The second year of that process for the Hilltoppers who trail Indiana 17 to 6. After a 22 yard field goal on the last possession by the Hilltoppers. Fig pen. Returns it out close to the 30. They'll mark it at the 28. First and 10 for Indiana. Marcus Thigpen. Thigpen was our leading rusher last year. This offseason, he spent some time with a nutritionist trying to um, trying to gain a little extra weight. <laughs> and we have a player down for Western Kentucky. Ben Souders is the player down for the Hilltoppers. And he's one of their good linebackers, but just picking back up on Thickpin, he said he was eating six mini meals a day, and he put on 12 to 15 pounds because they expect him to run, they expect to run the ball a lot more, so he's got to bulk up for that pounding that it's going to take. And once you get into the Big Ten season, Tom, you know you got to run the ball to be he's successful. And now you know that. you got to try that Michael Phelps diet. All right, tonight on the Big Ten Network, Adam Weber and the Gophers look to start the season off right as they battle a tough Northern Illinois squad. That's tonight, 7 Eastern on the Big Ten Network. That's our primetime game tonight. Northern Illinois, the Huskies and the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. 7 p.m. tonight here on the Big Ten Network. It is opening day of college football. Full slate of games in the Big Ten as we check in with Megan West. When Western Kentucky started their transition to Division One A ball, each senior heading into last season was given the opportunity to redshirt. In the end, only two chose to stay. One of them, Greg Ryan. He returns as the heart of the O-line for the Hilltoppers. And when I spoke with him, says he's quite happy to have the opportunity to be a part of the Hilltoppers' move to Division One. Coach Elson making it perfectly clear to all these players this season they are making history. Of course, along the way, taking a few knocks. Thank you, Megan. And actually, there have only been three teams who have made that transition from what was one double A football championship subdivision to the football bowl subdivision and won their first game. That is what Western Kentucky is attempting to do today against Indiana. And Tom, like I said, they've got they've got it down to 11 points. If they get it under 10 going into the fourth quarter, I feel like that gives Western Kentucky the chance to be competitive. And at that point, if KJ Blacks continues to make plays for Western Kentucky, he's showing maturity. He's guiding the offense to scores. They're not touchdowns yet, but they could turn into that later. And remember, if they haven't given up the fumble, they would have scored. The last team to pull off a victory in its first game in the football bowl subdivision, Florida International beat Youngstown State in 2004, 
22 to 16. It is a rarity when it happens. And I don't think IU wants to be that team that lets <laughs> that lets a, a, another, a Division II A team come into Division I A and be the team that they get the victory against. So they'll be on that bulletin board for a long time if the Hoosiers let that happen today. And let's see what happens as the fourth quarter approaches us. You can see Souders at the top of your picture being helped off the field, moving very, very slowly. But he is walking, mostly under his own power. David Elson and his Hilltoppers trailing 70 to 6. Elson told us he's from Indiana. He's from Indianapolis, went to Butler. He has never been in this stadium for an actual game. So this is the first time he is here to watch a game, and he happens to be the head coach of the Hilltoppers and he has to watch Kevin Lewis scramble make something out of nothing and slide his way up to the 45. He looked like Andrew Means the baseball player on that play Tony. Something out of nothing <laughs> that was 13 yards and remember every time he rolls out he's looking to pass first. If the defense gives him a lane he'll take it and run and I never see him slide very much. That's a smart play for him to slide like that. 15 yard play. Tried to hook up with Terrence Turner on that one. And that was a little too tall for number one, the sophomore from Auburn Hills, Michigan. Just going back to him, when you when you see a, receiver, a quarterback that can run the ball like him, as an offensive coordinator, every time he runs, you get excited, but also you look apprehensive because you don't want him to get hurt. Remember Dennis Dixon for, for Oregon last year. They were 8-0 when he was running that offense like Lewis runs it. But when he got hurt, that, te that team went in the opposite direction. Kellen Lewis actually mentioned Dixon by name in our meetings as a player he would like to emulate. Beautiful ball over the middle and complete for a first down into Western Kentucky territory. That is Turner on the grab. Turner's the recipient of that pass, but it, it, Kellen Lewis is making it look very easy. He's sitting in the pocket, he has no pressure, and he's just scanning the defense, finding the open man, completing the ball to him. First and 10 from the 44 of Western Kentucky for Indiana. Run it up the middle, give it to Brian Payton. For 27, Brian Payton, the ball carrier. Payton's one of the three backs that they want to get into that rushing attack. They're still trying to establish the rushing game, and they're running in between the tackles a lot more than Indiana's accustomed to. They're spreading it out, Tony. Thigpen has eight carries. Payton now with six carries in the game, and McCray has five carries. None of which are over 23 yards for the game, though. Tom, that's why they run the spread offense. <laughs> it, not, it doesn't only mean spread the field, it uh, vertically and horizontally, it means spread the ball around the different players as well. Kellen Lewis is the leading rusher for the Hoosiers. Eight carries, 123 yards, and a touchdown run of 75 yards. And a bruising run from Peyton, who is still on his feet. One man to get by, and he can't do it, but he's down to the five. They will mark him at the six. The clock will stop. First and goal for the Hoosiers, Brian Payton. Did he just hear me or something, Tony? What yeah, happened Yeah, when you there? watch Payton go off the uh, right side here, he runs right behind Faulkner's block. He knocks two Western Kentucky players out on that play. When the back is strong and powerful and he runs low to the ground, he gets up under the defender and keeps his legs moving. He can turn a five-yard run into probably a 15, 20, 25-yard run like he did there. It was Eric Jones who made the touchdown saving tackle. Jones starting for Trent Calhoun in the secondary for Western Kentucky in this game. And we have a player down for the Hilltoppers. And, and I think when he ran those guys over, he just ran out of steam a little bit, or he might have may, may have taken that into the end zone for a touchdown. So there is a player down for Western Kentucky with 121 to go here in the third quarter. Big Ten men's soccer makes its debut when the Akron Zips square off with Big Ten power Indiana tomorrow in HD at 2 p.m. Eastern right here on the Big Ten Network. Not very far from where we are right now here at Memorial Stadium. First and goal for the Indiana Hoosiers who Tony really for the most part here in the third quarter were pinned well back in their own territory until this drive which was kind of sparked by that scramble run by Kellen Lewis. Kellen Lewis he's their all everything player. He, he does it in the air. He does it on the ground and he's also getting the other players involved around him. And the sign of a good 
A strong, a good quarterback and a great leader is a guy that gets everybody else involved, makes his teammates better, and that's what Kellen Lewis is doing today. As a matter of fact, IU's got to be happy with the fact that they have three guys back there, Peyton, McCray, and Thigpen, who are running the ball for him, rushing the ball for him. They're establishing that rushing game. That's something they're going to need as the season progresses. The, you, you can't count on Kellen Lewis getting you 123 yards every game. A bruising 34-yard run by Peyton has it first and goal for Indiana, but with a Western Kentucky player still down on the field. Bill Lynch's team leads it 17 to 6 here from Memorial Stadium. Indiana knocking on the doorstep of Western Kentucky and leading 17 to 6. The injured player for the Hilltoppers was Torian Smith who did walk off the field but was down for a couple of minutes on the field. But there you see Smith making his way to the bench. The junior from Perry Georgia. So first and goal for Indiana. Kellen Lewis under center has a touchdown run and pass in the game. McCray is the running back. McCray gets the call. Up the middle and stopped immediately by a host of Western Kentucky defensive players. Kyle Henderson. Kyle Anderson, correction, credited with the tackle, number 96 for Western Kentucky. And Lewis Western, looks to the sideline for the play in this no-huddle scheme. And Western Kentucky has to try and hold them to a field goal to stay in this game. A touchdown here would be demoralizing for the Kentucky, Western Kentucky's defense. Lewis, quick pass to the end zone. It is caught. It's a touchdown. <laughs> And that was a prime example of Belcher, the freshman, getting a touchdown for the Hoosiers. But he used his height just to go up and pluck the ball out of the air. On a play like this, you just throw it up there, you let him go good. He jumped up and took the ball at his highest point. Usually freshmen away for the ball to give the defender a chance to knock it out. Belcher didn't do that. Matt Canada, offensive coordinator, told us that Belcher was going to get in the game today, and he got in for a score, Tom. DeMarlo Belcher with the touchdown grab from Kellen Lewis. The extra point from Austin Starr is good, and Indiana drives on down the field and takes a 24-6 lead. So Indiana in control after being pinned for the better part of the third quarter deep in their own territory. They now come back and score a touchdown on that drive. 2008 College Football Hall of Fame inductee and former Indiana great Anthony Thompson is our Liberty Mutual alumni spotlight. All season long, Champion Apparel will be showcasing the tradition and history of the Big Ten. Today, we spotlight Anthony Thompson, one of the greatest running backs to ever take the field. Indiana's all-time leading rusher led the Hoosiers to three straight bowl games. Twice was the conference's leading rusher was named Big Ten Player of the Year two straight seasons and earned the Maxwell Award as the nation's finest college football player in 1989. Anthony Thompson, champion. It's how you play. Back to 2008 College Football Hall of Fame inductee and former Indiana great Anthony Thompson, our Liberty Mutual alumni spotlight. Austin Starr is set to kick it away for Indiana. Anthony Thompson, the two-time All-American here at Indiana. Finished second in the Heisman race in 1989 to Andre Ware from Houston. One of the all-time greats, Anthony Thompson here at Indiana. As the kick goes through the end zone, Western Kentucky will come out first and ten from its own 20. Anthony Thompson's from my hometown of Terre Haute, Indiana. <laughs> and uh, when I was in ninth grade, I got a chance to have pizza with him one day. And when I shook his hand, I learned at that point, that's how you shake somebody's hand, because he about broke my <laughs> fingers. So now every time I shake somebody's hand, I try to break their fingers. You got to give them a man's handshake. And I learned that one from Anthony Thompson. Yeah, guys. I found out the hard way, too, when I shook <laughs> your hand. A very painful experience. You, can thank, you yeah. can thank Anthony, A.T., for that. He Anthony was a great, Thompson, great back here for Indiana. The career leader in touchdowns here at Indiana with 68. And again, a two-time All-American. <laughs> Hilltoppers on the ground. That was the end of the round play again by Win Winquell Graves. And I think that the Hilltoppers, they have to go up top. They have to throw the ball down the field. Geno Johnson made the tackles for the Hoosiers. Those line 
Panthers linebackers been all over the place today. So that is the end of the third quarter. Indiana has the lead over Western Kentucky, 24 to 6, trying to win their seventh straight home opener. The Hoosiers and the Hilltoppers, the fourth quarter coming up on the Big Ten Network. 24-6, Indiana with the lead. Western Kentucky had its opportunities in the third quarter. Tony could not capitalize just a couple of field goals. Tom, they had first and goal twice, and they came away with field goals. Now they have to score three touchdowns to get back in this game. That's a hard chore for them to finish out the fourth quarter and get those three touchdowns. We'll see what happens. They had some great field position that they could not capitalize on in the third quarter as we start the fourth from Memorial Stadium. Western Kentucky is in the white, Indiana in the cream and crimson, and let's go down to Megan West. Hey, gentlemen, you won't find a player or coach on the sidelines today that'll tell you they weren't ready to start the season this week. Now, Thursday, when a lot of nationally televised games got underway, you'd think the entire IU team, well, was watching those games nonstop. But maybe not all. I use defensive end Jamie Curlew was all over the final night of the DNC. Curlew, who is heavily involved in IU Students for Obama organization, was all over the Democratic presidential nominee's speech. Now, this spring when Obama came to Bloomington, Curlew met with him. He's been instrumental in voter registration here on campus, where they've registered thousands of students. Coaches say he's most likely to run for president someday on this team. Now, Curlew says that'd be fine, but he'll take as much football as he can handle professionally first. Luckily, Election Day is on Tuesday, not Saturday. Thank you, Megan. We know how Jamie Curlew will be voting in the upcoming <laughs> presidential election. There's not much doubt about that as Christopher Phillips came up and made the stop from his secondary position for Indiana on that previous play. Tom Curlew said he, one day he registered 800 voters for the Obama campaign. That's doing some work. Well, when you're 6'3", 264, and you ask somebody to sign, sign up, up for something, <laughs> they should probably do it. That's in their best interest. Black to throw, and he just throws it away. Pass for seven, he, he was, and he was trying to get that ball out to Quinteris Cooper. That's his favorite receiver. That's who he spent time working with in the offseason, trying to develop some chemistry. These guys have to make some plays down the field. They're playing extremely conservative right now, and that's not going to get you back in the game when you're down 24 to 6 with 13.44 left in the game. K.J. Black now 12 of 20 for 117 yards in the game for Western Kentucky. Second down for the hill. Second down for home the hill. Home. Black eludes the pressure. Feeling it from the backside, and he's going down. The sack by Jamie Curlew. We just talked about him. He comes up with the sack, and we're going to Chicago to get an update from Dave Revson. Okay, Tom, we showed you the bad news with Beanie Wells getting hurt for Ohio State, but this will warm the hearts of Buckeyes fans. Terrell Pryor's first collegiate touchdown, 18-yard TD run out of the pistol. Seven carries, 49 yards for him. It's 40 to zip, Ohio State. So Pryor throws his first collegiate touchdown pass, the highly touted recruit out of Pennsylvania. That Ohio State-Michigan game is going to be good this year. <laughs> And the interesting thing about the Indiana schedule, they don't play either one of those teams this year, Tony, and have eight home games during the course of the season. Black throws complete. And that's going to be good enough for a first down, the connection between Black and Quinterrence Cooper. And look at Curlew here. He does a spin move. He comes around. He falls down, but he gets back up, and he continues to move. It's that second effort that helped him sack K.J. Black. He fell down at first, but he got back up and continued to give the effort. And that's what IU, that's the strength of their defense, their defensive line, their linebackers, as well as those two safeties that like to play heavy in the run game. Curlew had four and a half sacks last season, put together three and a half sacks in the victory at Iowa. Oh, Austin Thomas came up and made a stick on the ball carrier. He made Thomas. A, he made a stick. He knocked. My goodness, Tony. <laughs> he knocked Morrell Booker back three yards with that hit. And I mean, he's a big guy. He's six foot two, 222 pounds. I mean, that's a lick there. And you look at Thomas coming off the edge here. He's very high. When you're high, Austin Thomas just came and moved the whole pile. We are a good distance from the field in our broadcast position. We heard that like we were standing on the sidelines. The pop from the hit from Austin Thomas. A little dump off again to Booker. He's shy of midfield. 
and, and, and Kevin Wright, as an offensive coordinator, he's got to give KJ more to work with. They have to throw the ball downfield. Right now, they're eating up a lot of clock. They're not moving the ball very far. If I was them, I would get into my two-minute offense, you know, pretty soon here to get some to get some uh, some momentum generated and try to get some points on the board. So this will bring up third and eight for Western Kentucky. 11 minutes, 12 seconds to go in the ball game. Indiana with a 24 to six advantage over the Hilltoppers. Black will roll it right and throw. And it's complete. Great throw on the run. And he hits his receiver, Darius Brooks. And the reason why he was able to complete that pass is because you got KJ rolling out. And like I said, uh, Kevin Wright, the offensive coordinator, he's getting him out of the pocket and they're trying to throw the ball down the field. 19 yard pickup on the play, Tony. They've got to do more of that right now. Like I said, they're down three touchdowns with 10 minutes to go. You got to put that ball in the air now. Down to the 33 yard line of Indiana. KJ Black. 155 yards passing in the game. And that was Brooks again. The, the, Brooks, mistake, the ball carrier, but it did not really work out as expected for Western Kentucky. And the mistake that Brooks made on that play was that he kept running toward the sideline. He never got his shoulders square, square north and south and got upfield. You can't run lateral in this game. You've got to get north and south. Get your shoulders squared to the line of scrimmage and get up the field so you don't lose yardage. Second and nine from the 32 for Western Kentucky. As we cross the 10 minute mark of the fourth quarter. Indiana with the 24 to six advantage. Black to the far side overshoots his man. We'd like to extend a special welcome to all those subscribers of Comcast who are seeing the Big Ten Network for the first time this season. Happy to have you on board. We know you'll enjoy having the Big Ten Network on your lineup all year long. In the Big Ten Network, we're in 52 million households in our first year. That's pretty good, Tom. Whether it's college football, college basketball, and all the sports in between and around it, it's all right here on the Big Ten Network. Our opening Saturday of college football season. We're here at Memorial Stadium in Bloomington, Indiana. Tom Wormy along with Tony McGee former standout for Michigan and the Cincinnati Bengals in the National Football League. Third down play. Gabler running room and Gabler's going to the end zone. And Tom, did you see what Gabler did when he, when he caught that ball? When Gabler caught that ball, he got his shoulders north and south. He split defenders. He took it up for the, for the score. Tony, this is a 32-yard play, black to Gabler, just a little pass, but Gabler does the work here. And he takes it north and south. He gets he gets his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage, and he really went untouched once he got it in there, but he wasn't running lateral. That's where the receivers get in trouble when they run lateral and not upfield. <laughs> There's the extra point for Western Kentucky, and it is good. The fourth touchdown catch of his career for Jake Gabler, and it's getting interesting here. 24-13, 939 to go in the game. Black to Gabler, and the Hilltoppers score. Indiana leads at 24-13, but Western Kentucky just got in the end zone. Jake Gabler with a touchdown pass from K.J. Black, who now has 187 yards to set a career high in passing yardage. Tom, we're watching the maturation of K.J. Black right before our eyes. He looked a little tentative earlier in the game, but now he's getting comfortable, he's making plays, and he's throwing the ball down the field. That's what they need to do to stay in this game and to make it a game. The ninth touchdown pass of K.J. Black's career started two games last year, but played a lot, split the snaps with David Wolke. K.J. Black given the starting role by his head coach. But have you noticed he just looks a lot more secure, calm, confident out there now. And that's, I think sometimes after you settle down, you get the butterflies out of your stomach, you can start making plays like that. That's what they want to see him do when he lines up behind center for him. A career high for KJ Black here at Memorial Stadium. 187 yards, just through a 32 yard touchdown pass to Jake Gabler. Kellen Lewis up the middle. He did this in the first quarter. He might do it again here in the fourth quarter. Touchdown, Kellen Lewis, his second rushing touchdown of the game. 
62 yards on the play, Tony. And he went through there virtually through the teeth of the defense, untouched again. There was one person that had a time, that had a chance to get him, and that was uh, Waters, the safety. He missed him, and Kellen did this for the second time today. Took it right down the teeth of the defense. I think he's going to have over 200 yards rushing if he, can, if he keeps it up. When Western Kentucky starts to build a little momentum, what do you do? Let K.J. Smith work his magic. I'm going to tell Kellen Lewis work his magic. Well, I can, under, I can understand why you might confuse them because they are similar players, but I think K.J. Black aspires to be as successful and as athletic as Kellen well, Lewis. Well, I tell you exactly. When you say athletic, I don't think that K.J. Black is as smooth in terms of running the ball, and he, he it's not as easy for him as it is for Kellen Lewis. It's like effortless watching him out here on the field, running down the field, in a collegiate game, being virtually untouched by the defense. Kellen Lewis now with 185 yards rushing in the game with those two touchdowns, a 75-yard TD run in the first quarter and a 62-yard touchdown run here in the fourth quarter with 9.24 remaining, 31-13, Indiana in the lead. And this is right what uh, Bill Lynch wanted to see from his team today. They established a rush, but I think they have to continue to get the ball into their other rushes. Kellen Lewis can be your leading rusher every game. Lewis's career high rushing came last season against Akron when he ran for 199 yards, so he is closing in on that. But he has those runs of 75 and 62 yards. I tell you what, speaking to him yesterday, you can see that after he had his off-season difficulties, he was humble. He wanted to get accepted by his teammates. They accepted him in practice, but the way to really get your teammates behind you is come out and do what he did today, and that scored a couple touchdowns. And, and Kellen Lewis really did great things right from the start of his Indiana career. Back in 2000, 2006 as a freshman against Michigan State, a game that Indiana won 46 to 21. He had five touchdown passes and one rushing touchdown. So you knew great things were coming from this guy. And now he has his head on straight, which adds a whole nother dimension to this player. Uh, Coach Lynch said that he signed a contract <laughs> of all the things that he wanted Kellen Lewis to do. Right now, they're reaping the benefits of that contract. He's living up to his contractual obligations to the Hoosiers, uh, Coach Lynch, that whole entire organization. Yeah, Tony, it was a written document that he had to sign. He said a lot of the things on that contract were difficult, he, but things he had to do to get back in the favor and earn the trust of his teammates and his coaching staff. And if he keeps playing like this, he's going to be signing a different type of contract <laughs> in the near future <laughs> with some commas and decimal points behind it. Lewis is a junior from Jacksonville, Florida. His head coach, Bill Lynch has to be pleased with the effort today. Coach Lynch in his second season took his team to the Insight Bowl last year. Trying to make it back-to-back -back bowl games for the first time since 1990 and 91. And if they have a healthy Kellen Lewis, sky is the limit for this Indiana team, which prior to the season, at least in your preseason polls and impressions from folks, were not rated very highly in the Big Ten. Might that change after this performance today? Even though it is Western Kentucky, Kellen Lewis has showed great athletic ability and the ability to lead this team. As well as that Indiana defense. And I agree with you. I think that this is a team on the rise. They walk in here and they expect to win. They're building the facilities. They're building the organization. They're trying to get continuity in their coaching staff, in their scheming and different things like that. This is definitely a program on the rise. Indiana next week will host Murray State. Their first four games of the season will be at home. They have eight home games this year for the first time in school history. And here's Western Kentucky trying to respond. That is Cooper on the grab. Now, here's the impressive thing like that, about that. Geno Johnson, the linebacker, he showed the speed and athleticism to run the receiver down. That's impressive. You don't see a linebacker that can catch a receiver from behind, especially Quinteris Cooper, who is extremely fast. Look at Johnson at the top of the screen right there, running him down from the back. 28-yard pickup on the play. The pass from Black to Cooper. KJ throws it one more time. Ball comes out at the very end of the play. Indiana says it has it. I think he was down before the ball popped out. And I think the officials are going to agree with your initial assessment, Tony. Tom, right now is not the time for them to throw the underneath screens. Indiana's going to be in the pre-game defense. They're going to let them have things underneath. They've got to get a two-minute offense and move the ball. Quinterrence Cooper is having a nice game this afternoon. Four catches for him and 80 yards, but here is the previous play, and let's see if that ball comes out. That's Cooper on the grab one more time, and did it come out early? 
I don't think so, Tony, based on that. Yeah, I think it has to be beyond a, a reasonable doubt. You have to be sure about that call. And it was it, it could go either way. So the ball remains with the Hilltoppers. 8.23 to go in the game. 31-13 Indiana with the lead. Black to pass, and that's just a bit tall for his intended receiver, Wenquell Graves. Graves today, a couple of rushes. Does not have a catch in the but, game, though. But what K.J. Black has to do, he has to speed the tempo up. The clock is not on his side right now. He has to get the guys to the line of scrimmage fast, speed everything up. You know, he's got to get, you know, it, it, when you look at him, you don't see that sense of urgency that a quarterback needs to have when you're down by a couple touchdowns with eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Third down with the ball just short of midfield for Western Kentucky. And the pressure comes. And the sack for Jamie Curlew. His second of the game, the first one he made on individual effort, getting back into play after he had fallen down. This time, he puts the pressure on Black and brings him down. And he put the pressure on him by destroying Greg Ryan, the left tackle, at the line of scrimmage. That was just mano a mano, man on man, and he outpowered. I tell you what, meeting with him yesterday and seeing the success he has on the field, it, it goes hand in hand. A great guy is usually a great player, and you can't say enough about the type of person or individual he was speaking with him yesterday. A breath of fresh air for college football. A great student and a great football player with two sacks today. Curlew now with six and a half sacks for his career. Stepping in for Greg Middleton, the all-conference defensive end who was suspended for today's game. Tom, he might want to buy a Middleton. <laughs> he might want to buy Middleton dinner for uh, taking some time off. <laughs> Jamie Curlew at right end. That was Jeremy Finch making the fair catch for Indiana. They will take over first and 10 from their own 13 when we return. Big Ten Network football is brought to you by High Performance Micogen. Brand grain corn hybrids. Contact your Mycogen Seeds dealer. Here at Memorial Stadium, Tom Wormy along with Tony McGee, former Michigan standout, but a native of the Hoosier State, watching yes, Indiana and Western Kentucky. 31 13, Indiana with the lead and trying to control the clock. Well, it was an emotional season last year, Tony. Uh, Coach Terry Hepner passing away from brain cancer during the summer of 2007. So last year was, was such an emotional season for head coach Bill Lynch and all his players. And what did they do? They went out and played 13. That's what Hep had always told them. Let's play 13, let's get to a bowl game. And that's what they did. He was such an incredible influence. Only here for a couple of years as head coach, but his legend, his legacy lives on in just about everything you look around and see here on this campus around this stadium. And what they did, what they want to do, is they want to take that legacy a step further, where they expect to play in 13 every year and win that 13th game. That's what they're trying to build to. He coached 13 years as an assistant at Miami of Ohio. 22, on the carry. And coached Ben Roethlisberger, the fantastic star for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and Bill Lynch, an assistant who took over the team last year under very trying circumstances. And the image of Hep's wife, Jane, bail, 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 bail. was incredible at the old Oak and Bucket game when Austin Starr made that field goal. And everything that they had worked for and everything that Hep had tried to instill in his players came to fruition with that field goal. And they were on their way to the postseason after a tremendous grab from Terrence Turner. But everything that Coach Hepner stood for exists today and, and when we talked to head coach Bill Lynch he kept saying this was a tradition that Hep brought in this was an idea that Hep had not here long but a lasting impression and something that will be here on this campus for a long but time. But Tom what you see is the what you see today is the fruits of his labor the byproduct of all his efforts out here on the field with the way the Hoosiers are playing today. You got uh, Chapel coming in completing the pass. This is a guy that competed for the starting position with Kellen Lewis. It's good to see him get in the game complete a pass and have a little fun at it too. Hep always said don't quit. It's when things seem worst that you must not quit. And that's what Indiana did last year and they hope to continue that this season 
as they start the year with what, what looks like a victory here over Western Kentucky as they lead 31-13 with just over five minutes to go. And they were trying to run the ball with Peyton right there, and that's the one thing they're going to have to do as they move forward in the season. They've got to develop a consistent inside running game. Once again, we can't, uh, Indiana can't count on Kellen Lewis to give him 200 yards rushing every game because you, you don't want your quarterback taking that many hits. And we saw him yesterday. He, he's, he's pretty, he's a little taller than I thought, but he's pretty thin too. As a matter of fact, he looks like a point guard. <laughs> so Chapel getting some game action. Kellen Lewis, his day, in all probability, is done. He's got a 62-yard and a 75-yard touchdown run on his resume this afternoon. 185 yards rushing for Lewis. That is not his career high. He set that last year against Akron with 199 yards. But 185 rushing the football. And for Lewis, 17 of 27, 144 yards throwing, two touchdowns. Very surgical approach today for Kellen Lewis. And he has the passing record. He took Antoine Randoel's record of 42. They were tied at that mark. He broke it today with his 43rd touchdown pass. Just for him to be in the sentence with a guy like Antoine Randoel and a junior this season, a lot of great things still to come from Kellen. Lewis, who already has a host of school records. Well, and when you think about it, you, you have to ask yourself the question, when he moves on to the next level, which I'm sure he will, is, is he going to be a quarterback or, or are they going to move him to a receiver? But when you see the thing, or is he possibly running back? I would think his build is a little slight to be a running back. I think uh, looking at him playing on Sundays poss with that possibility, he's probably going to be a receiver. Lewis had 3,779 total yards last year. <laughs> wow. Set a school record and was second in the conference. He's off to a fabulous start so far this season with his effort thus far today against Western Kentucky. Yes, he is. Third and long for the Hoosiers, 422 to go in the ball game. Chapel chased, throws it away. Okay, let me point something out. He was going down. He could have taken a sack. Very smart play on Chapel's part to get rid of the ball and almost get a completion off a broken play. And one more note on Coach Hepner as we have a Western Kentucky player down. He and Randy Walker, who was the former coach of Northwestern, Western, who yeah. also died tragically, they will both be inducted into the Miami of Ohio Cradle of Coaches Association. So everything that they stood for will continue. In fact, Hep took over for Randy Walker when he left to go to Northwestern for Miami of Ohio. The first game Hep ever coached at Miami of Ohio was against Northwestern, and they beat Northwestern in that game 28 to 3. So he beat Walker in that game, and now they both will go into the Cradle of Coaches Association. And when you talk about that Cradle of Coaches Association, the coaches that came out of Miami of Ohio, you look at the Woody Hayes connection, the Paul Brown connection, the Bo Schimbeckler connection. I mean, Bill so Ma many. Bill Mallory, Bill Mall former coach here at Indiana, uh, six bowl games for the Hoosiers. They put out a number of guys from that, that little pocket. And we talk about football being big in Florida, in Texas, and California. Let me tell you something. Football in Indiana and Ohio, it's here to stay. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Big Ten Conference and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference. Punting situation coming up for Indiana with a 31-13 lead, 4-16 remaining in our football game. Western Kentucky making the transition to the bowl championship subdivision. And they will take over first and 10 from their own 20, but Indiana has the lead, 31-13. The Hoosiers on top, 31-13, and today's Hampton Hotel's winning play of the game is the 75-yard touchdown run of the first quarter. Kellen from the quarterback, Lewis. Kellen Lewis. And he went untouched. Uh, Waters had the chance to make a play in him, but Kellen Lewis set the tone in this game very early, making it look easy as he strutted down the field, 75 yards for a touchdown, Tom. Touchdown at Hampton. Wake up. A winner. And today, Indiana is a winner, up 31-13, just over four minutes remaining in the football game. And today's Polaris Ranger, hardest working player of the game is, there's no surprise here, how about Kellen Lewis, 185 yards rushing through the air, 17 of 27 for 144 yards, two TD passes, and two rushing touchdowns. And once again, he's the all-time leading pass thrower in IU's history in terms of touchdown passes. Going past Antoine Randall L. 
And, and essentially, this game is over for Western Kentucky. Um, if you look at the demeanor of their guys, their heads are down. They feel like it's 31-13 with three minutes and 36 seconds to go in the game. But you know what? This is where you get better. They have to come out here and continue to execute because for them to make the jump into Division 1A, uh, they put on a good showing. And I think that's another case of a program that's on the rise. They have a new facility. They have a new field. They have a young coach. And they have consistency in their coaching staff and their organization. Let's not forget, Tony, here in the second half, at one point we had an 11-point ball game. Mm -hmm. And then Kellen Lewis goes 62 yards and scores a touchdown in response. But Western Kentucky did not quit, had great field position in the third quarter. Imagine if they had converted on a couple of those chances where they were in close. First and goal, second and goal. They only came away with six points, a couple of field goals. And like I said, if they can get K.J. Black to come out and play the whole game like he played in spurts of this game, that young man has, has the opportunity to be a great player in the, in the, conference, in the Sun Belt Conference, which they'll be in next year. How about the effort of the defense for Indiana? They have an interesting arrangement. Brian George and Joe Palsik, they are co-defensive coordinators. They put together a great game plan today to go against Western Kentucky, and this will produce a victory here. I was particularly impressed by three things on that defense. First of all, the three amigos, the linebackers, although Mayberry didn't make a play, the other two linebackers played extremely well. And then Curlew at the defensive end, he was a dominant force out there today And the two safeties. Austin Thomas came up and laid hat on everybody when they got the ball. He made a statement. A six foot two, 222 pound safety coming at you. Some of these backs are only like 190, 200 pounds. So he lays a punch when he gets there. Stick around after the game for the Big Ten Football Saturday postgame show. It's your source for highlights and analysis from all of today's Big Ten action. A key injury, the Ohio State, Youngstown State game. Beanie Wells was injured in that game, so look for an update on his condition. Do they As know how serious that injury was? We will find out in the postgame show. Wow. Coming up immediately following our game, the home opener here for Indiana. And they will make it now seven straight victories in home openers for the Hoosiers. As they lead it 31-13, just over three minutes to play in the game, and the pass from Black is incomplete. Looks like the Hoosiers are going to have to punt the ball away. Or sorry, Western Kentucky, they're going to have to punt the ball away right now. K.J. Black, he has to keep his composure <laughs> and learn from this and grow from this. Here is the future schedule this season for Indiana. That'll be coming up in just a second. As Black confers on the sideline. T.J. Wiest. Former assistant here at Indiana. And Chapel is back out under center for the Hoosiers. Indiana just going to work that clock as now we get to take a look at that schedule coming up for the Hoosiers. And keep in mind, no Michigan, no Ohio State, eight home games, the first time it's ever happened in the history, the 120-year history of Indiana football. And they got one win at home already, so they need seven more. And if you get seven more, if you get eight wins, you're guaranteed a bowl game. So uh, I think IU is definitely on track. Don't expect to see them throw the ball too much more today. They're going to run the ball and work on that running game. Let those guys get those, get those base up blocks against the defense and, and try to move the ball. But Indiana, they got to get you. cannot rely on Kellen Lewis to get you that much yardage in the rushing game week in and week out. Today he had 185 yards. But other players will have to step it up as they move into Big Ten conference play and I, I noted at the end of the schedule there Tony trips to Happy Valley to play Penn State and then to Purdue which has revenge on its mind after what happened last year in the old Oak and Bucket game when Austin Starr kicked the winning field goal which is 30 seconds remaining but that's what got them to the postseason so they have that memory as they head towards that Purdue game and if you when you look at the clips from that game just the type of excitement from that game going into the bowl game you get beaten the bowl game by Oklahoma State but hey, they started out good today. They've got their season off to a good start, and they should be ready to rock and roll. That victory over Purdue in the old Oak and Bucket game, the first since 2001 for Indiana. But that's going to be an emotional game because that's Joe Tiller's last game with the Boilermakers. And you can credit Joe Tiller for starting this crazy spread offense and bringing it to the Big Ten back in 1997. As Coming from Wyoming is the head coach. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I think, what, eight out of 11 teams run a, a version of the spread offense? 
and it appeared to work very well today for Indiana which as Matt Canada told us we have not huddled since the beginning of spring practice. They just don't do it anymore for any reason under any circumstance. It also speaks to the conditioning of these IU football players to be able to run it in this heat today. The no huddle offense without guys having to get IVs and different things like that. And again, as we touched upon it, the no huddle offense created by Sam Weich, who was head coach right here at Indiana in 1983. He followed up Lee Corso and then Bill Mallory came in after Sam White, and Bill Mallory did great things, obviously, with this program. And that's who uh, Anthony Thompson played under, uh, was Bill Mallory and, and, and that whole crew. And they were strong back then. As a matter of fact, they, they would fill the stadium in the, in the good old days when Anthony came in second in the highest mentality to Andre Ware. And if Indiana keeps up the momentum of last season and continues to play solid football this season, this th stadium will be filled here at Memorial Stadium in Bloomington. They've got that $40 million renovation going on in the north end zone. Things looking up for the Indiana Hoosiers football-wise. Zach Davis Walker on the carry for Indiana as some of the other players on the bench getting a chance to get into the ball game. And they're definitely content to just run the clock out now. 23 seconds left. Indiana's going to chalk it up, chalk it up as a victory for them. And uh, Bill Lynch and his staff, they have to be happy. They've got a primetime game next week. I'll be on the uh, sideline doing that game, so we'll be here again next week. Looking forward to it. 23 seconds remaining in the game, 31-13. Indiana will get its first win of the season under its belt and host Murray State next week. And they have two more home games after that. Eight in total this season. Yeah, that should be the last play of the ball game. Final seconds tick away from Memorial Stadium. The Indiana Hoosiers have now won seven in a row as far as home openers are concerned. And the two coaches who both are from Indianapolis and played at Butler shake hands at midfield. And Bill Lynch and the Hoosiers come away with the victory 31-13 over Western Kentucky University. And it was a good game today. Uh, it wasn't as much excitement as we expected outside of Kellen Lewis, but uh, as Western Kentucky continues to develop, you can expect K.J. Black and that rushing offense to get going. I think Western Kentucky, they can have a strong season as well. And they'll probably finish above 500. What impressed you most about Indiana today coming out with the no huddle offense, trying to get on the same page? Do you really have to ask that question, Tom? Well, beyond Kell Kellen Lewis, how's beyond, that? I would say the defense. The defense was strong. Uh, and they're excited about this defense here in this part of the Country. When I saw Geno Johnson run 20 yards down the field, 28 yards down the field, and make the tackle on, on Gabler, I said, that's that's the type of player I want on my defense if I'm a coach. And you guys, you got guys like Jamie Curlew getting knocked down, getting back up into the play, and earning himself a sack on that play. And let's talk about Ryan Mirando. He filled in for Middleton, and I don't think he lost a step on that defensive line. Fast, quick guy, got his opportunity to play, and, and did some positive things for the Hoosiers today. So you like what the defense did. Imagine when Middleton gets back in the fold and is able to be in there as a part of the defense. Right now, let's go down to Megan West. She is standing by with head coach Bill Lynch. All right, Coach Lynch, you're 1-0 in defending the Rock this year. That's what yeah. you wanted to do. How'd you like the debut of the no huddle offense? Well, I, I thought it had some, its good points. Um, Kellen, you know, made some plays. I, I thought Western Kentucky played really well. I, defensively, if you take away the really big plays Kellen had, this is going to be a heck of a football game. I, I thought they did a nice job offensively in the second half as well. But I think overall, you know, it's a good win for us, and we'll learn from it. It was good to play somebody else, but we got to get a lot better. Coming out to start the second half, you said how happy you were with the defense. Yeah. What did you think of their performance? Well, I thought Western really took it to us the second half, especially the third quarter, and it started with, you know, we had a turnover, and uh, and then uh, we got one back, but they made us punt from, you know, backed up, and then they kind of controlled the tempo of it. And then in the fourth quarter, they put together a couple nice drives too. Coach, congratulations. See you again here next week to defend the Rock again. Great. Take Thank care. you. Back to you guys. Thanks, Megan. That is it from Memorial Stadium. Our final score, the Hoosiers win it over the Hilltoppers. 31-13, Kellen Lewis, four touchdowns in all, two on the ground, two through the air. Now let's check in with our Chicago studio and Dave Revson. 31-13, Indiana wins it.